Speaking of booking promotions, Vince Russo sucks. <laughs> he is, in fact, wretched. The whole three-man crew sucks. Jarrett and Dutch and, and Russo, I don't know what's happened. This show was virtually without merit. <laughs> 60 minutes, there was almost nothing good to say about it. I his, there, there, there were there was a shining moment or two, but there was actually an open up with a shining moment, which was Cody and cutting a great promo. But the first person we saw was a generic blonde. Jeremy Borash, who did a fine job backstage. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's, he's wacky. He was, oh, he's, he was he was just twerpy enough. Yeah. Or he was not irritating, but he was not cool either. Yeah. And he was fine with that. Yeah. I, I think he fully understood. Oh, the he was, role he, he played, he's but clearly very comfortable. They replaced him with a girl. Now, she was blonde. wasn't really that hot. Just a blonde girl, and I. Don't, actually, you know what? There was a point that we did learn her name. Like 40 minutes into the show, we learned her name. One of the wrestlers somehow knew her name and and referred to her as such. But when this opened up, we were not alerted to who this was. And it was probably a good 40 minutes, like you said, into the show before we had any idea what this woman's name was. She was utterly beyond useless. I have never seen... She she made Rebecca DiPietro look like Rochelia. I don't know if I go that far. <laughs> I'd go that far, God damn it. She was certainly no Jeremy Borash. And by the way, they've already figured out Rebecca sucks, and she's gone from ECW. That's true. She was not on this week. And I guarantee you this chick's going to be here till the Titanic sinks. Just, she'll be, they'll probably give her more, she'll probably be the Naturals manager next. Great. I'm sure that's where this is all going. So, LAX, mostly Conan, just cut the world's greatest promo. Sort of promo where I thought, Conan should be paid $10 million a year. <laughs> they got money to burn, why not? Sure. Let him get a new hip and, and just talk. If he talked for an hour, god damn, this would be a good show. Mike Tanay opened the show sounding either bored or as if his spirit was broken. <laughs> I thought he was bored. You, you you may have found the actual real answer, but he was there. My spirit has been broken for some time, so if that's, I have a kindred spirit in Mike Tanay. Christian and Tomko came out. He's not Tyson Tomko anymore. Apparently, they've trademarked the Tyson, but his real last name is Tomko, so they can't trademark that. I think it should have been Tomko. It could be. Sure, why not? So, Christian was ranting about his three-way match at the next pay-per-view, a match that has not, in fact, been announced yet. He was referencing a match that has not been announced. Correct. He's like, God damn this three-way i got to wrestle the pay-per-view. This is bullshit. And I said, I'm thinking... What match? <laughs> what three-way? What three-way? What are you talking about? Apparently it was announced on the internet or something of that nature, but Christian knew about it. I didn't. Probably no one else did either. I, In fact, I, I uh, got an email during this match actually going, why is he promoting a match that has not been announced? I did not know. Abyss and Jim Mitchell came out. Christian called him a retard. Eugene is merely special. Abyss is a retard. Sting Sting's music <laughs> There's a lot to go over here. Sting's music played and he came down from the rafters, but it was not the real Sting. It was a dummy. And then the real Sting came out of the crowd and attacked the two heels from behind. With a bat. With a bat. And I thought why did a fake sting come down from the rafters? And Mike Tanay apparently alerted us that it was a distraction. To which I thought, why was a distraction necessary since Christian was already distracted by Abyss on the ramp? Right. When, I, when we say Christian and Tomko were distracted, Christian and Tomko were standing in the corner of the ring on the ropes, <laughs> staring up the ramp where Abyss was. Sting and he, came from the opposite direction. Yes, and he still needed a distraction. <laughs> you know what they need? Here's what TNA needs. If I were booking TNA with Russo, imagine that. I would fist fights every day. If, 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 if it were determined that this was the way the angle was going to go, I would say, okay, well, we needed to do something else. All right? Let's film the vignette of Sting earlier in the day preparing the dummy. He's preparing for his sneak attack here. 
I have a shot of him up in the rafters getting a mannequin and putting the Sting outfit on him. We'll have the, the footage of him painting up the mannequin and putting the wig on it and tying it to the whole deal. He can have, like, a big blueprint on the wall behind him showing rafters, doll, abyss, crowd, and an arrow to where he's going to come out and an arrow to where the heels are. That's what you got to do. If this bullshit's going to be this stupid, just go with it. Speaking of cartoons. This is, this is, this is bullshit, but they're, not, they're only going halfway, which actually makes it more bullshit. It does not make it more bullshit. If I actually saw a thing up in the rafters making up this doll and a big fucking thing behind him, like a, just a... It's best if you picture like on a chalkboard over his shoulder. Sure. So he has to constantly look behind him and check his plan. And stick figures. Yeah, yeah. They've got to be poorly drawn. It, might as well. Why not? At, at, least, at least you're... I mean, this made no logical sense. So film the logical part of it. Film the guy actually putting the dummy together and making his, his wacky run in blue. Why not? Because they only have an hour? Well, speaking of, that would bring us to the actual worst part of it is that this show at this point was less than four minutes old. That whole thing that we just went over there, and of which I wrote 231 words, was one minute long. Yes. I'm not even done with it either. Christian ran in and, and beat him with the bat, and Christian and Tomko ran for their lives, and Sting said he wanted to chat with Abyss later. Now, I didn't even think about this till just now, but later in the show, Sting came out and called Abyss out, and they spoke. Uh, yeah. Sting, Sting, I guess, decided he needed an hour to prepare this speech. He was already out there with Abyss. <laughs> they were already alone together, and he was like, go to the back and come back in an hour, and we'll chat. Pretty much, Did yeah. he have to piss? <laughs> Why couldn't they film that? Why couldn't he go, i got to take a piss. Why don't you go to the back, we'll do some wacky matches, I'll come back out here, and we'll have a speech. I don't know. I had a thought, but it's gone now. But... <laughs> I hate this shit. This show sucked. VKM, the Voodoo Kin Mafia. Sucked. Voodoo Kin Murderers, as Dave says. We're in the bushes, outside Titan Towers. They had a cease and disor- uh, desist order, and they said if WWE did not sign, the war would start. Remember CNN Center, they said? And today is like, oh, we remember that one. And I was like, that was... Seven years ago. It was 98. Oh, eight years ago. 98, 2006. Eight years ago. Yeah. Remember that one? Remember CNN Center? They didn't even go like, remember when... when uh, when uh, we invaded CNN Center, nothing like that. They were just like, remember, like, remember the Alamo. Yeah, remember CNN Center. Like, like in school, it's chapter 84 in your history book is CNN Center. And it's just all it said. Remember CNN Center. I hate the show. And by the way, here's the deal with VKM. What they're demanding is that WWE stops doing dumb skits. I swear to Christ, <laughs> they are, in fact, outraged at the dumb skits that WWE is doing, and they want them to knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> the hell was that? That's Dave laughing at this fucking show. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to, I know, I always get in trouble when I do this, but on the Torch website, <laughs> There was a review of this show by. <laughs> we're, just, we're not going to use his real name because I don't want to get in trouble. So we'll just say Gabe Yeller wrote this. I just want to read the a, a clever pseudonym. In the end here. <laughs> <laughs> what we're doing, the show is people are listening to it. It's it's bizarre to me, but go ahead. The adrenaline rush recap video closed out the show. The best impact since Russo's return. Definitely style-wise, not for people who want things to play out a little slower, but if they're going for an adrenaline rush format, that was this was a good version of that. A lot to sink your teeth into, and no dull spots where you could channel flip. And in the end, it built up a number of feuds and issues headed into the pay-per-view. I'm not going to say anything negative about Gabe Yeller, but I think he may have watched a different show. In fact, let me look at the date of this one. That that would explain everything, actually. 11.30. Would that have been yesterday? Yes. That was, in fact, yesterday's show. 
Maybe he's watching a tape or something. I'm, I'm just going to actually look at the matches and make sure we're reviewing the same show here. Alex Shelley. Yep, this is the same show. I disagree. I, <laughs> I disagree strongly. Sorry to throw that out there right there, but let's get on with the review of, of this wacky show here. So, by the way, I should note that this show is an hour long, but they got about 40 minutes minus commercials. That didn't stop them from doing shit during commercial breaks. They were still doing angles while we were watching commercials. They would come back from commercials and dudes would be beat up backstage. They came back from commercial and James Storm was under a ladder. And the generic blonde was there going, help, help. Pretty much exactly. In fact, I may have done a better job. So then Chris Daniels came out to do commentary for the next match, and as he was doing so, out ran Chris Harris, who screamed to the mic that he was going to find out who put the ladder on his friend. He ran off, and Chris Daniels said, and I quote, huh. <laughs> that was awesome. That was one of the few shining moments of the show. Huh. Sanjay Dutt, Chris Saban, and Jay Lethal. This is not one of the shining moments of the show. Now, when I say those three names, Sanjay Dutt, Chris Saban and Jay Lethal, you think, oh, those are the three pals that were doing Jackass. They, they must be having a six-man tag. The three friends must be involved in a tag team battle here. No, they were all fighting each other. It was a three-man match, and they were the three men. They got approximately 50 seconds, and Chris Saban won this 50-second match, and in doing so is the number one contender to the x title. There is nothing that gets a title over more than... Three title changes in five weeks, and you determine a number one contender to this title in a match that goes 50 seconds. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he stole a pin. And he stole the pin. He stole the evil had a move, and Saban got the pin. The number one contender is a cheater. That's, that's the only thing the worst is when the actual world champion is a cheater, but we already talked about SmackDown. Daniels and Saban got into a shouting match, and they pull apart afterwards. Total nonstop action. So they cut backstage, and LAX was now beating on Chris Harris. Gail Kim was there screaming. It's about an hour's worth of angles so far, and... I think we're about 20 minutes in at this 18 point. minutes. Yeah. If you guys want to know, I, I swear to God this is true. You want to know what happened with this show? Actually, yes. Russo fucked up and thought there was an extra week, and so I swear to God they had to do two hours worth of angles in this one show. Awesome. Now, why did they fire him right then? I I don't have an answer for you, but that that's what happened, everybody. Now you know. So then we had the more VKM stuff. They were yelling at the building. By the way, you don't know this, Vince, but tonight at the WWE house show, VKM showed up and tried to get in the building. Russo was there and some other geeks. I don't know if they actually got inside. I think Borash got inside, but. <laughs> All you do, Jimmy Borash alone. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> trying to cause trouble. Yeah, and they had cameras there, and it's so sad. It is. I mean, <laughs> sad is a good word for it. WWE and WCW actually were in a war. Yes. It actually, yes. It actually was two companies on equal footing. Actually, in equal footing, because WCW was kicking their ass. But yeah, yeah. it was two big companies where the, the battle swung back and forth twice, in fact. It swung one way when, when WCW first won, and for 84 weeks or whatever, they won, and then it swung back, and that was a fucking war. Yeah. This ain't no war. No. <laughs> this isn't even a battle. This is a small boy throwing rocks at a bully, and the bully ignoring him. This is like Rome and some barbarian invaders failing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just attempting something. and so, Just... They're throwing spears over the wall, but they're, they can't get it that far. No, so they're, they're, throwing, they're throwing pebbles at the wall. Yeah, and, they and don't even have spears. They're bouncing off the wall and ineffectually falling to earth. God. So, then Tracy was in the crowd yelling and screaming. <laughs> and I, I swear to you, I, and people are going to be mad, but this went by so fast, I have no idea what was happening. I have no idea. This was on screen for maybe two seconds of her just there yelling and cut away, just like that. I think something was, about Robert Roode. She was looking for Eric Young. All right, great. I don't know why. Borash made his only appearance during the TNA Spotlight deal. Then he vanished forever. So then TNA did a sit-down interview with AJ Styles and Mike Tenay. This was a, a lifetime movie. <laughs> First off, this show was so rushed that they cut every moment of silence. Every moment where there was not talk, they cut. Yeah. And it was just cut, 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 cut. 
of from one guy screaming to the other guy screaming to the other guy screaming to the other guy screaming. Rhino just happened to walk by. He just happened to walk by, and he heard this, and he got into a big shouting match with AJ Styles. They don't like each other. I don't know why we're supposed to care. I really don't. I mean, this was just so bad. And Tanae was there giving a stern look. Mike Tanae was there being Mike Tanae, which is great in its awfulness. He disapproved of AJ's new attitude. He disapproved. He lectured him, too. Yeah. So, again, they're doing this in reverse. The uh, the, bro- the breakup has already occurred, but, um, you know, AJ, and, AJ and, and Rhino are still arguing, still still teasing that breakup. Nash was drug testing the X Division, guys. This was high comedy to the nth degree. They all passed, first off. And no one's on steroids. The fact that Senshi is even involved in this shit is just a killer for him. Oh, yeah. Just a killer. I mean, he's... He's small, but he doesn't come off as an X Division geek. And then they put him in this, and he is an X Division geek. He's just as useless as the rest of them. God, it's so lame. Oh, then what did we have? Uh, let's see. Austin Star and Alex Shelley versus I wrote Trush, which probably would have been a better match. Truth and Lance Hoyt. Eric Young was running around like an idiot during this match, looking for somebody. People were telling him Tracy was looking for him. This match went a minute. Shelly pinned Hoyt with a cradle using the tights. And then Star, Shelly's partner, took Shelly's camera and showed the ref that Shelly had cheated. And yes. so the ref reversed the decision for his own team. Yes, and then uh, and then the end of the match, by the way. Because pulling the tights is uh, worthy of a disqualification. That means <laughs> that you can lose the world championship for pulling the tight. You, in fact, could. You could more. I hope me, Russo ain't listening. You could win the world title for having your tights pulled. You can. Why, why don't you get tights that are nothing but handles? <laughs> <laughs> Just get tangled on the guy's finger. That's <laughs> the funniest thing you've ever said. Thank you. That's true. Why not? We need Russo listening to this show. We'd turn this company around. A man whose gimmick is that his tights have handles all over They're, they're him. sticky. Sure, and he's trying to just get a match with the world champion. If he can just get a match. <laughs> Fuck, that's awesome. This is the greatest idea you've ever come up with. Thank you. God, we should start a promotion. This is good at the time I suggested my music just be a loud series of beeps, and I walk <laughs> in the ring backwards. Yep, you're fat. <laughs> you are fat. The blonde was still unnamed. She was interviewing Tracy and Eric Young. Tracy said, if you don't accept my challenge, you're fired. Yes. So Tracy can fire Eric. Now, Tracy works for Robert Root. Yeah. So if Tracy works for Robert Root and has the power to fire people, then Robert Root must own TNA. I guess. I don't know how. Well, he's <laughs> Mr. Wall Street. I guess so. Maybe Perhaps he bought, bought it. Out. Maybe he's Panda. He could be. He may have bought Panda stock or something of that nature. But, yeah, she has the power to fire folks now, I guess. And they're going to have a bikini match at the pay-per-view. Yes. Swear to God, bikini match. Yeah. Robert Rude, and, or uh, Eric Young and Tracy. Uh, Tracy. A bikini match. Yes. That's like, like Eric Young in a bikini. You can't see this for free, though. Oh, no. <laughs> come on now. you got to pony up the cash. you got to pay for this match. They ain't giving away Tracy and Eric Young half nude for free. You must pay. And soon you will be able to, kids. Twenty nine ninety five. Then we had, her name was Letitia, I guess. Eric Young knew this somehow, so I guess he's banging her. Then we had Sting coming out. I'm just going to skip the VKM bullshit. Sting came out to have a meeting with the best. Actually, you must cover because there's a moment here where B.G. James... Well, go for it. I don't remember his exact words because I did not have the notes, but he... Pointed out to Kip James this was important because they were tired of seeing all this crappy television. That was their war. <laughs> their anti-crappy television. And he said that on this particular television program, which made it the funniest thing ever. I'm getting so tired. <laughs> Seriously, the show's only about 40 minutes long so far. Yeah. This was... Remember back in the old days, the weekly pay-per-views, when they would be two hours and feel like four? Yeah. This was one hour and felt like six. Yeah. Sting came out for his meeting with Abyss. I thought this was the main event. It's not. There's actually more. Sting put him over and then said, 
Why are you with Jim Mitchell? Maybe it has to do with the pain you're in every day, Chris. <laughs> that is classic Vince Russo right there. I wonder if Abyss is Jake Chris. Is that a possibility? Absolutely not. That man was small. All right. Yeah. So, his name is Chris. Real monster. Yeah. So they have called him like... Uh, so Abyss used to be this crazy, Anchorton. insane guy who broke free from the asylum. Now he's a guy who plays Halloween dress-up on weekends. Chris. Chris. Couldn't they have called him... Uh, his day job at Corn Dog on a Stick, and he goes... What's a wrestles. scary name for a man? Marion Possumby. <laughs> what did you just say? Possumby. Possumby. Couldn't they have called him that? Possumby. Possum. P O S E N B Y. Possumby. I don't know if that's better or worse. What the hell is Possumby? It's a fucking guy's first name. Who's ever been named Possumby? It's an old, it's an old antiquated name. Get, don't get me wrong, but Chris. Well, okay, you're right. Possumby would be better than Chris. Chris. Hey, Chris. <laughs> I have no idea what's Maybe going on. Maybe Abyss is the last name. His name is Chris Abyss. Sting said Abyss needed to start worrying about himself. And maybe he wouldn't get disqualified. I don't know. I don't even know what this means. He's a champion. I don't know. What's Sting so... Why okay. is Sting lecturing the man who won the championship? This is what I got out of this. Sting and, and James Mitchell are fighting for Abyss's soul. Sting is representing God, and Mitchell is representing the devil. And Abyss is representing Chris? Yes. This sucked. <laughs> it did, in fact, suck. This blue, 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 blue. Then what did we have here? It's not oh, over there again. was more. Oh, wait, there is. Yeah. yeah. Christian and Tomko hit the ring and attacked Abyss. So apparently we have a three-way at the pay-per-view with one heel and two baby faces. Right. And somewhere in here, and I forget where, but it was said... That Tomko and Abyss have a past. No, they do. They have a, like, they're lovers. They must be former lovers. There's they, no other explanation. Fornication is in, is in Chris's past. Mm hmm. Chris and Tomko. One guy's got a first name and one guy's got a last name and nothing else. Much like Kazarian and Maverick. Man. Maybe when they united in lovemaking, they became Chris Tomko. But now they're, now that they, now they're broken apart. They are. One guy got the last name, one guy got the first name. That must be it. Could be. Possumby. That's what his name should have been. I can't believe this show's so bad. Sting. Oh, there's more! Sting wanted a handshake from Abyss, but Mitchell ran down and demanded his monster not shake hands. Mitchell feels like he's the one that controls the monster Abyss, not Sting, said Mike Tanay. I don't know what that means. Sounds serious. The Derek Blonde was standing there towering over Petey. Yeah, this poor fucker. He, she looked eight feet tall, and he looked like a midget. They, they, was she on a box? She may have been on a box. She a was, rib. This was so fucking dumb. So fucking dumb. Petey Williams is a small man, folks. Uh, they and, couldn't even put him on a box. No! They, they could and, and they, they could not have filmed this in any way to make him look smaller. No. It's just a shrimp. Yeah. He was immediately attacked by LAX. He stomped a mud hole in him. The main event was supposed to be Angle and Petey versus LAX for the tag titles, built up in no weeks. <laughs> they ended up doing Kurt versus LAX because of this. Kurt was really still for the tag titles. Get this match. Petey was injured, so Kurt was working alone. Midway through, out ran Samoa Joe, and he stood on the apron, waiting for the tag. Angle tags Joe, his, his I guess, enemy, maybe his friend now. They're watching each other's backs. Joe runs wild. None of this is a DQ. Angle puts Hernandez in the ankle lock. The ref called for the bell. The place went nuts. And then they announced it was a no contest since Joe wasn't legally Angle's partner. Nothing in the match. Nope. We decided after the match we'll, we'll make this announcement. And uh, at this moment, I swear to God, someone held up a Fire Russo sign. It's true. <laughs> true, true. Perhaps, true that is. Perhaps drawn up on the spot. Teddy Long would say. So, um... Getting that national oh, exposure national. this year. Like, that that's the way too long. Oh, shut up! Boxes. There was actually a Don West drop where it is... Can't think of the word, but, um... Ended up being 27 seconds long enough at the time. This show sucked. This show was fucking bullshit. This show was so bad. I've never seen a worse show. <laughs> Maybe the worst show ever. It was just saying something because we just watched the worst show ever like a month ago. 
I emailed Dave saying that was the worst show I may have ever seen. And let me see if I can find his response here. It was comical. Let's see. I've seen some awful shows, so I wouldn't go that far. He has been watching this for uh, 40-something years, though, so let's give the guy the benefit of the doubt. But thumbs down. Oh, God. I just want to I agree with my, my whole body down. Yeah. The Impact Show was horrid, but considered or compared to last week, which was the worst show I ever saw in my whole life, this was a gigantic improvement. Millions and millions of times better. So I don't know what you can say about that. It's like going from a, a thumb having been chopped off to a thumbs down. What did you think of Impact? Uh, hell of a lot better than the week before. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> More... Are you trying to sabotage the show no, the, again? Or the, the, you this, is, the, this is natural incompetence. This is not forced. It was, I, 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 all I remember is the, the finish at the end, which I thought, it was dumb. At least I got to give you... It was you, stupid. At it least was, I can say this, that I, I can't necessarily blame you for not remembering anything on the show. Mm-hmm. But I would expect a little Actually, more. Now, now that I think about it, I remember two things. One, the finish uh, of the show, while dumb, was not nearly the disaster I perceived it to be, or I thought it would be upon hearing spoilers. And two... I'm glad you thought so. Two, boy, VKM sucks. <laughs> VKM is horrid. Now listen, first off, the idea that Angle and Joe are wrestling Sunday is the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. I mean, why? Because they have nothing else they think anyone would pay to see. I mean, it's... Is there any buzz for this match? I've heard none. No, none. Are people like, God, I can't wait to see him wrestle again? In particularly since popular opinion, or at least a, a strong portion of the audience, didn't think the last one was all that great. Why? This is just the worst idea. And the setup for it is, is completely absurd. But It's almost like when, when, when Angle and Sean was so great. Cause they, they, and they also did match two, like yeah, out yeah, of the blue? Yeah. They, 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 the match one had a... I mean, they, they had teased it for more than a year, and then it had like six months of actual real solid build, and then, and then the match was awesome. And then they rematched like three months later. I believe I had seven days build. It did. It was like it was like I think it was I think weeks. Angle showed up on Raw the week before the pay per view and they did the match. This was that was dumb. Yeah, this that is, was fantastically. This dumb. is similar to that. So anyway, the show opened up with them attempting to recap last week's one hour show that was written to be a two hour show in one minute. That failed. <laughs> yes. Rhino was in the ring, ring screaming about AJ and challenged him to uh, actually first uh, Chris Daniels came out. Tried to quell the situation, and um, I don't even remember what happened. I, I, I hate Impact because I almost have to read my notes verbatim because I can't remember a fucking thing about the show. Yeah, see? It just goes by. It's just, oh, oh, this show kills me. So, I guess, I'm just going to read this. He said at Genesis, Rhino got between them to stop a situation from spiraling out of control. He said he was there for the same reason. It doesn't have to be that way. Rhino heard a guy in the crowd say, let them fight, and he agreed. He said last week he let AJ slide, but he wasn't going to let him tonight. AJ hit the ring, jumped him from behind, which actually got booze, fake booze, by the way. Then security ran down to break him up, and that was that. There were fake booze piped in all night, and it sounded so absurd. TNA has had fake crowd noises a lot, and it always sounds... No, this was the first time I've ever noticed the booing. Fake booing may be new, but I've I've heard fake cheering a lot, and it's awful. This was bad. I mean, It it was... It's even like, when booze start, it's like, folks start and it builds. This was just like someone hit the boo button. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden everybody Ooh. was booing at the same time, and then they'd all of a sudden stop at the same time. It was so fake. Yeah. Got to end, kid. I am aware that Chris Den- or uh, that AJ and Ryan are having a match at the next pay-per-view. I don't understand really why, except they've done a bunch of wacky skits that do not make sense. Because they're mad at each other. No one knows why. There you go. A- AJ's irrational. That's the only logical answer. Today hyped up the main event, the All-Star War with Samoa Joe versus Kurt Angle versus Sting versus Abyss versus Christian Cage versus Rhino. And he said it in such a manner that it just sounded completely insane. And it is insane. It is. Now that I think about it. But um, We will throw six of our top guys together uh, with one hour of build for yeah. no reason. Didn't even announce it last week. No, no. And, and, and no reason. 
<laughs> Nothing on the line. The reason was to get bodies on TV and stars in the main event. To get yes, to get people on TV. Petey Williams faced homicide in two minutes, I believe. And I think that um, here, here's one of the problems with TNA. There are many. I think I say this about every five minutes when we recap <laughs> this show. All right, let's say you've got two minutes. They go, okay, you guys go out there, you've got two minutes. It is possible to do a two-minute match. Yeah. And it is okay. I've seen them. If they say two minutes, don't create a 15-minute match and try and cram it into two minutes. Yeah, do not do, not do a fast four-minute match. None of these matches mean a goddamn thing. I'm sitting here trying for the life of me to remember who won this. Of course you can't remember. No, no idea. Can. No one can. Because it's like... No one can ident- digest this. Things things happen. Somebody won this match. Here, here's the problem. And the instant way I, I can say this as a wrestler. Okay. Here's what happens with, with, with wrestlers. They don't. I don't think a lot of wrestlers understand. And I can also say this as a gymnastics coach. People don't know what's going on. When I when I have gone to uh, gymnastics meets and somebody does a a layout with one full twist, all that is is a backflip with a straight body, and in midair you do one twist. Okay, I sat there in the crowd and listened to people next to me go, "My God, did you see that? He did a double twisting double flip." They have no idea what happened. Mm-hmm. All the dude did was jump in the air, do one flip, and do a twist. They have no idea. They're, they're like, oh, my God, he twisted four times and did eight flips in the middle of that. When you're a regular fan just watching a match, I don't think a lot of wrestlers understand that most fans don't really have any idea what's going on. If you carefully study wrestling, if you're a hardcore fan, you can probably keep up with a lot of this stuff. But a lot of fans have no idea what's going on. You do a two-minute match, and you do 84 spots, and all it is to these fans is a blur. Yes. It is a blur, and at the end, somebody gets their hand raised. And the instant they get their hand raised, it's thrown to the back, or someone runs out, or someone is shouting at them. There's never a replay of any of this. It's completely, utterly forgotten. Yeah, it's it's because it, it's, it's irrelevant. I'm not saying that Dusty Rhodes is the greatest wrestler in the world, okay? But Dusty Rhodes had about a two-minute match, maybe three minutes with uh, Mitch or Nick or whoever the Geek Spirit Squad guy was. I can almost go over that entire match. I watched it one time. I can almost tell you. In fact, I can pretty much tell you exactly what happened. I remember the finish. They came out. They teased locking up forever. They locked up, and Dusty sold his eye. (laughs) Mitch didn't even do anything. Dusty just sold his eye. He then got kicked as hard as humanly possible in the leg a couple of times. He went down. He sold the leg. And then uh, after selling the leg for a little while, he made his uh, big wacky comeback. He did the... uh, The big fat elbow. No, he threw him into the ropes. He put his elbow up. Oh, that's right, yes. The dude ran into it. And then he did the giant Abdul the Butcher elbow and just crushed him half to death. And that was the end. I remember every single solitary fucking moment of that match virtually. Can I remember one moment of the P.D. Williams version? I can't remember his opponent right now. I'm going to look at the page. Homicide. Homicide. Can I remember one minute of Homicide and P.D. Williams from last night? I don't remember the finish. The only thing I remember. I don't remember one spot. I don't remember anything from the match itself. I remember after the match, Homicide, or excuse me, uh, Hernandez gave someone, uh, probably Peace. Hernandez gave somebody the border toss and looked brutal. Had to be P.D. It was P.D. That's it. I don't remember what spurned this or who won the match or what happened. It afterwards. is a complete and utter waste of time. True. It is, a, and here's the other thing about this show that I hate. VKM is so horrible. The only funny thing they did all night was when they went in the theater to watch John Cena's movie, and there was one fan there. That was funny because I was in that theater. <laughs> there was one fan there. Not funny was the fact they didn't have a movie playing in the background amongst stupidity in this thing, but. They wasted so much time on these stupid, stupid skits, which are building up to what? A stupid skit. Are they building up to a match with, with uh, Hunter and Sean? No. no. No, no, no. Are they building up to any match with anybody from WWE? No. No. All they Not are... building up to a match with someone in TNA. They are useless skits. They could have cut out all of these skits and given an extra two minutes to all these guys, and hopefully those guys would have slowed their fucking match down so they could be remembered... So that you could get something out of this match. Why would you go out there and, and fucking do all these crazy bumps and risk your life for something that nobody can fucking remember? I don't know. 
If I... Does PD think people are going to come up to him on the street and go, boy, I remember that match you had last night when you did this, that, and the other thing? No. They won't remember a single move. Waste. So since you do have the notes there, who won? I'm going to have to read it here. Uh, bad guys, um, let's see. PD won in two minutes with a sunset flip. Okay. Bad guys jumped him, piped in booze. AMW hit the ring. I totally forgotten that. I don't know if you remembered. AMW hit the ring, and uh, James... Oh, oh! This I remember, now that I look at my notes. AMW hits the ring. <laughs> this show's awesome. This is, I'm now starting to think this is even worse than the week before. AMW hits the ring to make the save for P.D. Williams. Okay. Fine. There's Homicide and Hernandez, two thugs... AMW hits the ring in their street clothes. They're going to make the save. They're all fired up. What does James Storm do? Does he start throwing punches at House of Fire? No. He runs. He tries to do a jumping, twisting wheelbarrow into a loose oh! bulldog. <laughs> That's right. And he fucks it up. Oh, I forgot that. I can't tell you how many fights I've been in, and it's like, hmm. I'll get a bull on you. I'm going to try and do a uh, spinning head scissors into a hurricane rana on this stuff. Yes. That's what I'm going to do I'm here. so angry. I'm going to attack you with a body scissors, and you will then throw me up, and I will headlock you. I'm so mad. I'm going to do La Mystica on you. I fucking forgot that shit. This is just... <laughs> I hope TNA is listening right now. You guys are idiots. <laughs> can you... Can... Look at what you're putting on TV. Yes. Think about this. this, this Think is... about this stuff. Why would a fucking cowboy <laughs> in his street clothes, angry at two thugs, do fucking lucha? He wouldn't. Even luchadors don't do lucha when they're pissed. God. Yeah, you know, Rudo boo, a Rudo beatdown, it's just the fucking Rudos just stomping on guys. And then... The... When they actually have a fight, they just slap each other. Yeah. Remember that time Ultimo Guerrero was so mad he did the wheelbarrow to the bulldog? Oh, no, because it never happened. Because the fucking mean Mexicans, even in fucking Mexico, don't do that bullshit. Yep. God. I hate this show. <laughs> I think it, it, this show is definitely better. I guarantee you. I don't know. I may have to go back and start reviewing that other show. I'm skipping all the VKM stuff. It was so It bad. all sucked. Eric Young was in a sweatsuit. Here's another one. How much time on this show did they waste on Eric Young and the girl who were going to have a bikini contest? They wasted, well, they didn't have a match. I was going to say they, they, they wasted about eight segments on them, but the segments were all ten seconds long. They had they said, a, Here's they, Eric Young running up the stairs. Back they had, to the match. They had a Cinchy Eric Young match, which is a backdrop for this match. It was a backdrop for a match on pay-per-view. And what match is it, everybody? Eric Young and the girl in the bikini contest, which you know is going to end up with Eric Young in a bikini and like a thong. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Where's my credit card? Let me let me grab it. I'm gonna call my cable company now because I can't wait for that one. Boy, I can't wait to see Eric Young in that bikini contest. That that's money. And how much time do they waste on this? A lot. Blonde Chick was back. She was fantastically better than this week, than last week. Still horrible, but um, she went from being abysmal to just terrible. That's an improvement. LAX challenged AMW to a flag match at the pay-per-view. I'd like to note that because it's TNA, polls will be involved. <laughs> Since Russo is booking... <laughs> There will be poles and there will be ladders in this flag match. I, Can't you just fucking have a flag match? The, the, Can't you just have a match? I do like that Conan, I, when you get down to it. Conan hates everybody. Well, he hates that, his company. There's that too. But when you get down to it, the match is still just a flag match. You get the other guy's flag, you hang it up and you win. Conan still took time to explain this to everyone in case anyone at home didn't know what was going on. And thank God for Because Conan him. has a brain. Conan does have a brain. No one else in this company has a brain. That's true. More dumb VKM stuff. Jim Cornette came out to make the flag match official. Christian interfered. He said he wanted a background check on Chris. <laughs> he might recall is, in fact, Abyss, the world champion. He said that Abyss had done a very bad thing 
And he was about to reveal it when Abyss came out and attacked him. Tomko cut him off. Tanae had to clarify for us that Abyss's secret had to do with Tomko. I guess Christian forgot that part, or maybe I missed it or something. I don't know. Who I don't cares? care. Sting ran down with his bat to make the save. Don West was like, this is just a glimpse of what you'll see at the pay-per-view. Again. <laughs> Why would I want to see more? <laughs> this wasn't any good. No, and it was short. And it was bullshit. Why would I pay to see more of it? Why would I want to pay to see more shit? Thumbs down. So we finally got one of the only good things on the show. Angle and Joe hyping up their match. Yes. This was actually very good. I don't know if it sold any buys. Angle has now created a wacky backstory. Years ago, he lost a match to a Iranian, an Arab, as Granny would say. <laughs> And uh, he was very unhappy about that. But later he got a second chance, and he beat that man, Abbas Jadidi. He will never forget That's his name, right. he yeah. said, in the 1996 Olympics. And he said because of that, he felt that young Joe should also get a second chance. Therefore, they're fighting again at the pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. And he said, win, lose, or draw, this is our last match. He may as well have just said, there's going to be a fuck finish in this match. He may as well have just said it. That's true, too. That is what there's going to be. While Angle was saying Samoa this... Samoa Joe is not winning clean, I guarantee you guys. Yeah. While he was saying this, Joe was talking about how much the last loss had taken away from him, how it ruined his 18th month winning streak, and how he ne this was his second chance for redemption. Sure. <laughs> and he was going to kill the man. That, too, yeah. This was good. They, they did also uh, tease paralysis. They did. That's <laughs> always good. That's nice. Borash hyped up the pay-per-view Sunday. They have added Jerry Lynn as special referee in the Chris Saban-Chris Daniels match. Why? Just to add stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Russo, I think Russo's, his whole booking philosophy he cannot, is... He cannot book a wrestling match. No, he's, he's got to have, I think he's got like a, a top hat. And it's got... He may. It's got pieces of paper in it with like ladder. You know the hopper they use the Royal Rumble where they spin the thing? And no, they... top hat. All right, fine. There's a ladder. There's pole. There's a... Uh, what else does he have? Judy Bagwell. <laughs> Uh, girl, man in bikini. Blood. No. Hair. It's too easy. Too easy. It's got to be wacky. Um, upside down, reverse battle royal. No, you know what he has? Here's what he has. He's got a top hat. You're having so much fun right now. <laughs> I figured this out. He's got a top hat. It's got pole, midget, uh, man in bikini, Bunch of other stuff, and then it's got a bunch of other, a, a bunch of other random matches: battle royal, cage, barbed wire. And what he does is he pulls three out, and whatever order they come out in, that's what the match is. So he pulls out reverse, battle royal, tournament. Hey, let's do a reverse battle royal tournament. That's how he books. There you go. I guarantee that's how it's done. <laughs> what did I do? I did something like that one time. I think it was for this. I don't remember. YWF? I don't remember. If I remember, I'll, I'll try and bring it up. But it was something wacky where I just put a bunch of words. Oh, you know what it was? It was it was coaching. I did this coaching once. As a coach, there ain't much to say. Let's be realistic. Do a flip, kids. Oh, yeah, your kids do shit, and you're like, put your feet together. Point your toes. Straighten your legs. And I noticed that a lot of coaches, after a number of years, they just start throwing shit out. I don't even think they pay attention. They'll, like, see this wacky vault, and there's no way they could have seen anything in this vault. And they're like, good, but uh, tighten up. <laughs> so what I did was I, I put a bunch of terms in a hat. I mixed them all up, and I had my kids do pommel horse or whatever the event was. And every time somebody went, I pulled something out of the hat, and I was like, straighten your legs. And I put it back in and moved on. And I did that the entire class. You're a hell of a coach. And it ran exactly the same. <laughs> there was no difference in what I normally did. And I would have done it forever, but I don't know if they, the management would have been too happy with the whole deal. So that's how it works, though. That's how Russo books. Just pull random phrases out of a hat and put them together, and that's your match. So this one, they got the special referee tag. So tonight we had, um, he got his hat, and he, lift, he shook it all up, and he pulled out all the stars on TV free. And he drew a fourth one that said, no build. No, no build. 
Oh, and fuck. Oh, you didn't have fuck finish. Sorry. Didn't pull that one out. They had this match. It went about five whole minutes. Yeah. So no joke. Kurt Angle, Sting, Abyss, Christian Cage, and Rhino for free with a weak build five minutes. Yep. Go Russo. You dumb shit. They had a horrid match. Actually, it was, it was not a horrid match. It wasn't match. horrible. It was just short. Whenever I'm talking <laughs> about Russo, just the words horrid, horrible, stupid, Wretched, shit, fuck, awful. it all just comes out of my mouth. But the match was actually all right for the five minutes until the finish, which uh, I don't know what you thought, Vince. I don't really care. But uh, Angle pinned Joe clean. That was dumb. That was, in fact, dumb. That was dumb. I didn't say it was not dumb. I didn't say it was good. I said it was not as stupid as I thought it would be. What part of that was not stupid? Well, a couple of things. First of all, outside of the pinning Joe part, one of the things that was stupid about, stupid about this was that they were giving away Angle versus Abyss and Angle versus Sting. When you watch it, Angle never actually touched Abyss and Angle never, never actually touched Sting. So I they still have that. Uh, number two, the, 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 the way the pin came off. I, he pinned a, him. <laughs> Angle pinned Joe, and, but Angle pinned Joe last month, so... People, in theory, will still buy a pay-per-view to see Joe pin Angle. No, listen. Listen. Angle and Joe had a 15-minute battle or whatever it was, 12 minutes. I can't remember how much it was that everyone was bitching about. And it was violent. They dropped each other on their heads. There was blood. There was violence. And Angle, after a long, hard battle, finally tapped him out. Mm -hmm. They went five minutes. Angle did one angle slam. Yeah. And got a pinfall. That is a stupid part. Could you have made the guy look like a bigger dork? I can't. How could you possibly... Even if somebody would have interfered, he would have looked like less of a dork. If Tomko would have kicked him and then Angle hit the slam, he would have looked like less of a dork. Angle pinned him clean with no interference with one Angle slam. Yes. That, that is, in fact, stupid. <laughs> I can't think of anything dumber. <laughs> even if he punched him with a closed fist, it like maybe he got a lucky shot. He hit one slam. It was really, really weird to see. I can't even remember the last time a man got pinned by the angle slam. Oh, fuck. Years. Years. <laughs> That's a setup move. That's the move everyone kicks out of. This was dumb. I no way can I can I endorse this being any good. I, I, I say again, it was not as dumb as I thought it would be. Uh, I'll let you say whatever you want. I, I This is like the CM Punk argument. What is it? <laughs> You haven't given me a good reason why this was not dumb, except it was not as dumb as you expected. I want to know what could have been dumber. I can't think of anything. What could have possibly been dumber than this? Think for a while. Give me a minute. All right. When you heard this, when you heard this, what did you imagine? I I imagine there was Joe and Angle in the ring alone for a while, and then Angle Angle face-to-face beat him straight up. Just beat him and left him laying. The fact that it, that they, he hit him out of nowhere with the move, that he was helping Joe up and then double crossed him and laid him out and got the quick pin and then escaped. That was at least a valid attempt to justify your position. I still feel you're wrong. Fine. We're going to do the TNA pay-per-view recap tonight. Brent Kremen was not invited over this evening. Caused a lot of problems last time, not the least of which was the fact that he showed up with no means of transportation home, which meant Mike Rowe had to drive him home. And Mike Rowe was unprepared for this. I felt bad that he had to do such a thing. And so I banned Brent from Club Chico this evening. I know some of you are very, very sad. You wanted to hear Brent talk about the TNA pay-per-view. You're not going to get to. But, for those of you that love Brent Kremen, I do have a slight treat, if you want to call it that. And it's also, for those of you that hate Brent Kremen, it ain't going to be so bad. Brent sent me an email, and he said, Brian, can I please be on Figure Four Daily tonight or on another night soon? And I thought, why? (laughs) Why would you be on this show? And I sent him that email. The exact words were, uh, why? And he responded, Kurt Angle is alive and I am happy. I hate crime time. WWE is unwatchable. I hate Vince Russo. So I've decided I am going to give Brent Kremen three minutes All right. to talk about these subjects, and then I am going to hang up on him as God is my witness. Awesome. So let's uh, get him on the line here, and let's get this shit, and that is the operative term, over with. 
You just gave it. Hello. Brent? Yes. You are so lucky because I just called your phone and it, well, it was sent to the voice message system. And I was going to give up on you and make fun of you on the air, but I called back and you answered. Well, thank you. Yeah, I was just on the other line. Well, listen. I wasn't confident I was going to get a call, and I'm glad that I did. Well, who were you talking to? Oh, hi, it's Vince. Hi, Vince. Well, who are you talking to? Answer our question. Albertsons.com. I'm trying to get groceries delivered. I see. This fits in perfectly with tonight's show. Listen, we've got a big TNA report to discuss, Brent, and so we're only going to keep you on the line here very, very shortly. Okay. I know you. What got, am I permitted to talk about? Uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start a timer here, and you have got three minutes to say whatever you want that is on your mind. And in exactly three minutes, I am just going to hang up on you. Okay. How does that sound? That sounds fair. Just please give me like a like a ten second warning. Uh, okay, your timing starts now. All right. Well, well, first of all, I'm very disappointed I didn't get to see the show tonight. I was tremendously looking forward to it. I'm so happy that, that Samoa Joe won, because last last month I was disappointed that he didn't win. Now now he gets his win back, and I think that's fair. And I hope that he wins the uh, third the third match, because uh, because he's the one that was, that's been there. He's the one that's put in the time, and he should get the win. Um, and, I'm, and most importantly, I'm happy that Kurt Angle was still, he's still alive. I was very, very worried for him because the man's insane. He's certifiable. Um, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of his, but uh, he's addicted to pain pills. He's probably on steroids, and he's nuts. And he is going to be dead. Um, one of these days, he will be dead, and I'm, I'm thankful it is not tonight. The opinions of this segment are the opinions of Brent Kremen and not necessarily anyone else. Related to the Figure Four Empire. Go on. Um, so, so those those are my opinions. It's a good angle. Yeah, you know, takes about fifty pills a day, and and, and I just think he's alive. And and Kurt, if you, if you ever hear if you hear about this, feel free to call me. Brian has my number. I'd be happy. To, I'd be happy to talk to you and tell you yourself. Please keep yourself alive, and you can still have great matches without being insane. Now, um. Also, I want I wanted to say I hate crime time because because committing criminal acts is not funny. I don't find it funny. I don't find much of what the WWE does very funny, and, and I and I and I really can't watch the programming very much. Um, you know, fine, let's see. And then as far as uh, TNA, Vince Russo is an idiot. Um, Brian is absolutely right in everything that he says. And as much as I hate Vince McMahon, this whole thing with I read I read a little bit of the results on on the Observer site, and and uh, as I say, I don't I don't have a password or an email that I can remember to uh, to Brian's site. So, um, but, I, but the Observer site uh, it sounded pretty funny with 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 um, what they were doing tonight with uh, with Vince at King McMahon. I don't know who the oily guy is. I don't get that. But, but they should have leave them alone. I mean, they're beyond an underdog. It's like ECW trying to compete with the WWE when ECW is a separate company. It's a joke. Leave them alone. Try and focus on having a good product. And if you're going to make fun of them, have a, have a couple of guys that aren't complete jokes, like um, like Brian James and, um, and, 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 and Mr. Stupid Haircut. This is the most lucid you've, you've ever been. Old. You're doing a great job. Keep going. I mean, I mean what, what the hell kind of haircut is that? Uh, rockabilly. <laughs> I told him. I, 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 I'm I was I was tired of him ten years ago. And what the hell's up with him with the with the with the damn kiss on his ass, Mister Ass? And then he shaved his ass for a while. What is up with him and asses? He's the ass man. Oh, that was. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, new rule. <laughs> that just became a regular feature. <laughs> That was your Brent Kremen <laughs> moment, everybody. <laughs> Three minutes with Brent. Three minutes with Brent Kremen. <laughs> every TNA show. Oh, God. I just want to remind you all, for those of you who are perhaps are new listeners and not familiar with Brent and, and that was your first experience, that's a real human being. <laughs> that that's, is, that's not a character. No. That's a guy named Brent we know. Not our friend. A guy we know. Yep. He, um... Every time Brent comes on the show, people ask, you know, um, <clears throat> what is that? Is that a is this a work of some sort? People say things like, I don't get it. Yeah, I don't get the whole Brent thing they say. And they the answer is, it's just Brent. i got to turn off all my phones here. Brent's trying to call back now. I know this bastard's going to try and call back. 
Everything's turned off. We should not have a problem now. But, uh, yeah, that was Brent. He's got some very uh, strong feelings about the wrestling business. He's actually been a fan forever. I think he, God, he, he got the Observer forever. I don't even know if he gets it anymore. He, he may have fallen on rough times and not been able to afford it at this point. But, um, yeah, let's get yeah. on to the uh, our TNA review. I love how Brent, there's nothing I like better than a guy reviewing the show that didn't see it. Yeah. That's always good. <laughs> Tell me more about this show you didn't see. Did you turn the heat on, by the way? No, should I? No, it's hot in here. It's all the way down. God, it's freaking hot in the middle of winter here in Seattle. All right, the TNA show. It was, I will give this a thumbs in the middle. Believe it or not, somewhat pointing up. Yeah, and I guess. I, I will tell you why. Okay. There was some horrible booking on this show. God, yes. There was some horrible booking on this show. <laughs> Almost in every match. There was some good wrestling. Yes. And there was a great main event. Yeah. Now, granted, the main event had a, Shitty finish. God, I had a shitty finish. But, actually, you know what? It could have been much worse. Yes. On the scale of shitty finishes, on a scale of 1 to 10, that was only about a 1. The Abyss match was a 10. Yes. Actually, the Abyss match last month was a 10. The Abyss month uh, match this month was merely a 7, maybe an 8. We'll get in all these stupid finishes here on the show, but Angle and Joe went 20 minutes. It was great. These guys beat the living hell out of each other. Mm-hmm. I mean... I cannot see, there were a lot of people last month that were very ha- unhappy with a 13-minute match. I really don't know how you could watch that match and not see that it was good. But apparently some people did. That's your thing, fine. You mean last month's match? Yeah. Okay. This month, I-, I haven't really read a lot of feedback on it yet, but to me, I don't see how you could watch this match and not think that it was good. You can hate the finish. Go ahead and hate the finish all yeah, you want. Yeah. But if you ignore everything up until that finish, this was great work by both guys. Particularly if you're the kind of person who thinks, hey, Joe and Angle, that sounds good. If you're, if that's your attitude going into this, then there's no way you could not like what happened. No. <laughs> it's impossible to expect anything better. And, and also, anybody that bought this show and is angry about the finishes and the booking, I don't feel bad for you in the slightest. Not in the absolute slightest. You should know better by now. Yeah, if you don't know what you're going to get when you watch TNA or buy TNA by now... I don't know what to tell you, buddy. I don't know what to tell you. Especially as a subscriber to this site, or who has read this site. Anyone listening to this show, anybody listening to this show that was disappointed because they bought this show, because of the booking and the angles and the finishes, I seriously don't know what to tell you. It's going to be like this every month. You don't. You listen to all these shows, and you don't, and you think you're going to get something different on pay-per-view? Of course not. No. I don't want to play the I told you so game. But when Russo first came on the scene, did I, and, I, and I'm not even saying I, everybody, yeah. everybody with a clue. Taking credit for predicting bad booking by Vince Russo is like waking up at 8 a.m. and saying, see, I told you the sun would rise. That's right. It didn't take a genius to no. figure out he was going to fuck everything up, which he has. Oh, God, yes. Now, granted, and this is, this is the odd fact to it, everything is staying stable. And I guess really it is an odd because for four years things have, have stayed have stable. Stayed very, very stable. It, this is this is a company with the most hardcore wrestling fans I think have ever existed on earth. The only fans of equal uh, e- equal hardcoreness are the two million or so that stuck around when WCW was dying. There are about two two point five three million fans that stuck around WCW till the bitter end, the very last day. And it was as bitter an end as there have ever been. <laughs> yes, these fans sat through everything. You could not drive them off. WCW was almost like an effort to see if it was possible to drive off lifelong hardcore wrestling fans. And in the end, they drove them off by dying. Mm -hmm. They could not drive them off with programming. No, which is remarkable. They could have put the WCW logo on the screen for two hours, and those 2.5 million people probably still would have watched. And it would have been better than some of the shows they did. It would have been. And with TNA, it's the same sort of thing. Mm-hmm. They've had they've had every different booker. They've had every different star come in. They've had stars come and go. They've got progressively bigger stars coming in. They've got new TV slots. They've got new programs. They had everything. And it's the same million people every single week. And pretty much the same 35,000 people buying pay-per-views. And I think this pay-per-view did 35,000 buys. Ooh. They did a hell of a buy rate last month, I suspect. It's looking like it's going to be fifty to 55,000, maybe 60,000 buys. Wow. The biggest pay-per-view of all time. And this one didn't do that. Last month, I didn't think it was going to get that high last month. But everybody everybody knows that that show did have a lot of buzz. 
It had a lot of buzz. This show had no buzz. Nobody cared about Joe Angle 2 a month later. No. And really, I don't even think it was because people were disappointed with the first match. I mean, there, I think to me, and this is why I didn't have great interest in Joe Angle 2, I just saw it. Yeah, a month ago. There, there, there was, <laughs> just saw it. There was no time for me to build up any interest in uh, seeing it again. Right. It was just, I saw it. Now give me three months to think about it and look back. And as, as if anything in history, the more time passes, the more you look back upon something and, and uh, see it as more than it was, mm-hmm. whether good or bad. True. And with three weeks, that ain't much to look back on. No. You remember it vividly. A year from now, I may look back and go, God, those Joe Angle matches. Remember when TNA had those matches? Those fucking kicked ass. Look what we got now. I could be saying that. Who knows? But I'm going to look back a year from now, and I'm going to see things maybe a little bit differently. But three weeks is not enough time. And and it didn't have the buzz, and 35,000 buys is my prediction for this show. Now, let's go over this little debacle here, which we witnessed with young Mike Rowe and Buddy Wayne. Buddy Wayne showed up. He sent me a text message at 8. Are you still getting it, he said. I said yes, and he responded, I'm on the way. Please wait. I thought, he ain't coming. <laughs> He's going to make us wait here till like 10 o'clock, and then we'll start the show. So we watched the 60-minute special on UFC, and when that was over, uh, we started the show, and he showed up. The TNA show, Low Key, Jay Lethal, Alex Shelley, Sanjay Dutt, and Austin Starr had a five-way match. It used to be that every TNA match, or every TNA pay-per-view, had an X-Division match, which was a bunch of random dudes doing random moves, and there was a random winner, and it meant nothing. Mm-hmm. Now they've changed it so that it's more complicated. That's true. This was a, a TNA special. It was five dudes in an elimination match, and points were given. Right. The man who was eliminated first got a point. Yes. The man who was eliminated second got two points. Right. And so on and so forth. It may have been explained. No. But I don't know what the points were for. Well, they're calling it the Paparazzi Championship Series. So there's a number of things. So in theory, there will be more events where men can earn further points. I see. At the end, there will be a point leader who gets a wacky trophy or something. I get it. So there are, I am making assumptions here, but yeah. that seems to be how it's going. The, the points thing started when, when, when Alex Shelley was eliminated first. They started talking about him getting one point, and I thought Kevin Nash was joking. Yeah. I, I thought he was being a wacky commentator character guy. It sounded like comedy. Yeah. And then the second guy got eliminated, and he said, well, that's two points for him. Yeah. And I thought, wait, are you serious? This was real. This is real. They, they were giving out points, like like we're at home keeping score. Yes, and, 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 and we, of course, are not at home keeping score. And so at the end, when it was all done, they did not even bother putting up a leaderboard. No. Showing the current standings. They just assumed we would all know. Yep. They came down to Senchi versus Star, Austin Star. And Star went up for something, but... Uh, Somebody distracted him. Shelly came Shelly distracted him. Mm-hmm. Who did I? Yeah, Senshi and Star. Okay, right. so Shelly, his own partner, distracted him. Yes. And uh, so anyway, he, he ended up missing, and then uh, Shelly, uh, who gave what a what? I've just got all these random names here. I fucked this entire thing up. Low Key. Low Key won. Gave him a uh, DDT cradle, basically. He cradled him right on his head. Yeah. And got the pin. Here's the thing with Kevin Nash. Here's the thing with Nash. Nash is a businessman. Nash is about getting himself over. Nash is about making money for himself. That's it. You don't say. Yeah. Very friendly, funny. He's a hilarious guy. Nash was so funny on commentary. Yeah. It's all. His his very first line was, he walks down, he's wearing blue jeans and a black shirt, and his hair is all short and gray, and he says, I look like Race Bannon from Johnny Quest. I have no idea who that is. That's because he's not a dork. But okay. Dorks across America laughed. All right. Who who is Johnny Quest? Who is Johnny Quest? Johnny Quest was a cartoon from like the sixties, maybe the seventies. It was the, the the boy hero and his, his his doctor dad and his Indian psychic and his dog and Race Bannon was the bodyguard. I'm sorry, I have not kept up with my. Uh, it actually, it, I'm cartoons. pretty sure it predates you. I know Scooby Doo and uh, it's about all I can remember. The rabbit, Bugs Bunny. Anyway. <laughs> Let's move on here. He's a rabbit. So anyway, yeah, Nash was hilarious. But the thing is, he had two guys 
and they got to the finals or near the finals. Alex Shelley actually just got randomly. He got nowhere near the finals. He got randomly eliminated. He got punked. Sarah got eliminated because of Shelley, and they're both Nash's boys. And Nash responds by he's he's trying to act. Yeah, I think he's trying to act mad. It's like the script said Nash is mad, but he just laughs through the whole thing. He, he, he's like ha ha ha, you two. Young fellows. He's not taking the character of Kevin Nash. The character of Kevin Nash is not taking any of this seriously. This, to, That's bad. This is a gigantic joke to Kevin Nash. Yes. And so it's a gigantic joke to everybody at home. Yes. And none of this can be taken seriously. And none of it's helping anybody. Nobody pays forty bucks for a joke. Well, hey, you not, ever, not, you not ever, funny joke. You ever see comedy specials on pay per view that are like, boy, this special did eight hundred thousand buys and challenging boxing? Probably not. No. I don't think I've ever heard of a comedy show that did big pay-per-view numbers. People don't buy fucking, they don't pay 40, 30 bucks or whatever for comedy. They're paying to watch wrestling. Well, that's true. What, are you trying to rush me along? No. I'll take all the time I want I'm to talk agreeing about with you, fucker. comedy. Let's turn you down here. You just be quiet. Don't right, rush me. Go. Four points, he told Star afterwards. You got four points. Let's write that down, all of you keeping track at home. Eric Young was in a bathrobe being interviewed about the bikini contest. This whole thing is just a backdrop for wacky lines about how be a man and win this bikini contest, Eric. That's the whole point of this. Yeah. They had the contest. The fans voted. Tracy stripped down wearing more than you would think in a bikini contest. And then he stripped down and kept stripping. And there was a lot of wackiness. His new name is the Paranoid Pied Piper. I don't know if that if that's supposed to sell pay per views or make him more interesting. He it makes him more Eugene, which uh, <laughs> also is not a man who's selling a lot of pay per view buys. So anyway, the fans the fans voted for Eric Young to win, and then Robert Roode attacked him, and Eric Young, the babyface, ran away, kept running, and then was gone. So Robert Roode, the heel, grabs the mic. And he tells Tracy, when I said he could beat you in a bikini contest, I was joking. I didn't think it would really happen. Now, some of you might recall that this all got set up because Tracy told Eric Young that he was going to do this bikini contest, and if not, he was fired. Thus setting up the fact that Tracy has the power to fire Eric Young. We don't know how. We don't know why. We just know that Eric can say, if you don't do this, you'll be fired. Tracy can say that. What did I say? Eric. Fuck off. Turn you down for a second. What should you get for correcting me? So, Tracy apparently has the right to fire Eric Young. Now, with all that said, Bobby Roode is trying to explain why he's so mad. He's mad because nobody likes him. And he says this right after telling all the people that they suck. Maybe he's just dumb, you think. So he says, Tracy, here's the deal. It is your job to sign Eric Young to a contract with Robert Rude Incorporated Enterprises, Inc. If you do this, you will keep your job. If not, you may be fired. Now, the reason he wants Eric Young in his stable is because the fans love Eric and if Eric is in the stable, they'll love Bobby Roode. He wants the fans to love him. So instead of just saying, I love all of you fans, he yells at the fans and then decides he's going to hire a baby face or some such wackiness. Anyway, my question was, why can't she just go, you join Robert Roode Inc. or you're fired and he's just in? She was acting like this would be an impossible task to get this man to uh, sign with Robert Roode Enterprises. Am I missing something in this story? You are, without question, the only Homo sapiens on the planet Earth who put that much thought into this segment. I have to put all this thought into every segment <laughs> because every segment's dumb. Well, this I, you're not wrong. Don't don't misunderstand me. None of it makes a damn like a sense. Has Bruce ever read a book? I don't know. Can he read a book? I don't know. Well, I don't even. I don't even know. Supposedly he's read the Bible. He can't possibly be a Christian. Well, then, I realize people are going to be appalled when I. Well, I can't say that. Books are this the way. Bible is available on tape. He could not possibly have read any portion of the Bible. 
No. He cannot possibly have listened to any of the Bible on audio cassette. Because I've never read a biblical story that was anything like a story that Russo has ever written. <laughs> he cannot possibly read books. He cannot possibly have even watched any movies. Unless they were minus five star movies. Russo's stories make no sense. Every story he writes has a complete and total lack of any sort of logic. Yes. How can you, how can you be employed for so long in this business? How can you be an adult functioning human for so long? How can he still have a job in TNA? How can people read these scripts every week and go, this guy, he's got a clue. This script, money. This makes sense. I get it now. So anyway, this made me... The only thing, that, a, a, as stupid and illogical and pointless as the segment was, the worst thing of all is, she wasn't even that naked. No. If, if she had been in or something no, very skimpy, it wouldn't No, the worst thing of all was that this occurred. Well, yeah. Well, somebody, somebody said, you know what'll, what'll be great on pay-per-view? Let's make people pay to see Eric Young and Tracy in bikinis. And his will be way, way smaller. Yeah, his was way smaller than hers. Yes. I don't know what these people are thinking. Then we had I paid four bucks for that, by the way. Yes. That upsets me. What I I could buy I could have bought teriyaki for four bucks. Instead I had to watch Eric Young in Sponge a SpongeBob bikini briefs. Oh, then we had Chris Daniels and Chris Saban for the X title. This was the story of the show. Actually, this didn't even have a weird wacky finish. This no, was, this, this this had a weird wacky angle, but the finish, this may have been the only clean finish on the show. What happened was, Daniels and Saban were wrestling, and Daniels began his comeback, and he hit the, the BME, and then he pinned him. Yes. <laughs> he hit his finisher and then pinned him. At the moment where it appeared they were building to the finish, yeah. it ended. Yes, the finish. It was like someone t tore the last couple pages out of a book. Yeah, they were like, okay, you guys have, uh, oh, end it now. I actually assumed someone had gotten hurt. It, I, it, no it, one got hurt. Yeah, I can, it, 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 it's so abrupt and so sudden. But like I said, I, I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe this is the only clean finish in the show. It may have been. And then they, they did a wacky angle afterwards. Yeah, what's happened was, and also I've been trying to figure this one out for a while. Perhaps somebody can help me out. Jerry Lynn is the mentor of the X Division geeks. And for a while, he was specifically the mentor of Chris Saban, Sanjay Dutt, and Jay Lethal. Right. Those were his, that was his trio. So he's been having problems with Chris Saban for a while. He had, he had problems with all of them, but mostly Chris Saban. So then all of a sudden, and I still have no explanation for this, two weeks ago on TV, these three geeks, this trio, were just randomly having a wrestling match with each other. They were all fighting each other. Lethal, Dutton, Saban. Yeah. Yes. Just they had a match. They had a fight. Yeah. Where the winner would become the number one contender. And I believe it went a minute 30. Perhaps less. And uh, Saban stole the pin. Right. And Chris, uh, and uh, Jerry Lynn has been yelling at Chris Saban to, to shake hands and be respectful and this and that all month. So when this was over, he got the mic, Jerry Lynn, the referee, and he said, Chris Saban, get up here and shake Chris Daniels' hand. So what happens... Chris Daniels goes, I don't need to shake his hand. I don't need your respect. He gets in a pull apart with Jerry Lynn. Mm -hmm. Jerry Lynn slaps Chris Daniels. Yes. And I don't even know where Saban went. He hid in the corner. He just hid in the corner. I can't wait for him to do something, but he just stood there. Yeah. And then that was the end. Yes. I don't know. Don't look at me. I, 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 I guess they're doing Jerry Lynn versus Chris Daniels now. <laughs> I, I don't know. And the match wasn't that good. I thought it was good until it just ended abruptly. Yeah, it was not nearly as good as the match they had last month. Probably two and three quarter, maybe three stars, and then just ended. Then it was it on its way stopped. to being significantly better. Yeah, but, uh, I, I agree with that. So then we had Cornette coming out, introducing Dale Torborg, A.J. Perzinski. I've already pronounced his fucking name. That was right, actually. And David and Rick Eckstein. David is the MVP of the World Series. He had a trofeo of some sort. Um, AJ had a title belt on his shoulder. And the crowd hated this. That's true. They were there. And I know that this, this, this led to an angle. Here's, here's another thing about TNA. This like led to an angle and all that. But if we pretend that it was not going to lead to an angle, 
All right? Let's just pretend we're in an alternate universe and this went off without an angle. Okay. What was happening? They brought up some baseball players. TNA decided on pay-per-view to randomly bring out four baseball players and talk about the book one of them wrote. Correct. <laughs> and you paid for it. Now, as I said, <laughs> if we imagine no angle came of this, why? Well, because baseball is a sport. In the world of <laughs> TNA, what caused them to go... Let's bring these four baseball players out on a pay-per-view that everyone's paying twenty nine ninety five for and plug this man's book. Apparently they thought uh, so doing they, this would get their show on Sports Center, which would result in millions and millions of buys. An angle did break out. And they've been on Sports Center before, by the way. David was plugging his wacky book and they asked him his favorite wrestlers and he said Rhino and Lance Hoyt. Yes, that Lance Hoyt. Yeah, Lance Hoyt. So, AJ and Dale started ripping apart the book. It broke down into a fight. AJ Hoyt, cut a off, decent heel promo, actually. It was... For a baseball player. For a baseball player, it was exciting. It was better than anything Sabu's ever done. He threw the... Actually, uh, Dale Torborg threw this awesome punch at... Uh, he did. He, threw, he knocked the brother out. Rick, he knocked Rick out, which was just great. And they got in this little brawl, and who should make the save but, yes, Lance Hoyt. Hoyt, 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 Hoyt. Now, why'd you do that? It reminded me when the fans used to chant his name. I don't do that anymore. I won't. Now, this, I'm sure, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't watched sports news shows, but I'll bet this got a lot of publicity. Well, okay, I'll let you finish. I'll bet this got a fair amount of publicity. Let's just say it was the the main story at every sports show tonight. Let's just say that, okay? Why Lance Hoyt? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an answer for that question. I have exactly zero answer to that. Uh, in 1997 and 1998, when WWE had the opportunity to bring in Mike Tyson, who got the rub? I believe that was Stone Cold Steve Austin. In 1985, when WWE got Cindy Lauper, who got the rub? Hulk Hogan and Roddy Piper. When, uh, who were, what are some other? Those are the two big ones. Yeah. Those are the two. I'm trying to think of any others, actually, that, uh. uh Dennis Robin and, uh, that, uh, Carl Malone. Who, who got Dennis Robin and Carl Malone? Dallas Page and Hulk Hogan. <laughs> okay. Who gets the baseball players? Lance Hoyt. The guy on the fucking pre show. Yes. This company, I, I just, I'm flabbergasted. Not Samoa Joe making the save. Not Angle. Not Kurt Angle. Sting. Not even Sting. Not even Jared. Like that. It's, it's Dallas. It is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's giant, it's, it's giant Al Snow. It's the big brother of Kid Cash. Yeah. I just don't, I don't get it. That's actually a much better point about this than I was going to make, which is they've, gotten on SportsCenter before, when Jarrett had the brawl with the Tennessee Titans, and when Brian Urlacher showed up, this all made Sports Center. You know what? 35,000 buys. <laughs> yeah. Meant nothing. Meant nothing. Meant nothing. So, thumbs down. Thumbs down. Although, when the fans, about three minutes in, were chanting, we want wrestling, so loud that Cornette had to, uh, had to uh, acknowledge it, that was good stuff. <laughs> I can't believe Cornette's still with this company. Oh, I can't believe he has well, given them the finger and driven back to Louisville. Their days. <laughs> Rhino was doing a promo. AJ flew in out of nowhere, wiped him out. They began brawling backstage, and Rhino then nearly killed him. Mm -hmm. He gave him a front suplex onto a mailbox. I don't know why it was. There's a, a mailbox was, backstage. There's yeah, a mailbox in case you need to mail a letter from an event. From the impact zone. So they dropped him on this mailbox, and AJ just went skull first right in the cement. Yeah, he was supposed to land on the box and slide down. And what happened was the box was flying out from under him. I don't even know if he was supposed to slide down. He was supposed to land on the box. Yeah, well, regardless, the box was flying off from under No, 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 no. Let me explain what happened. All right. Because I watched it eight times. In I was moment. there. You were you were watching his head. I see. Instead of dropping him gut first on the mailbox, like you're going to drop some guy on the top rope or something like that, all that hit were like AJ from the thighs down. I see, yes. So his entire yeah. upper body just plunged to the earth. Yes. Why would you... So anyway, then they brawl all over the impact zone. This is zone. the first time AJ nearly died tonight. AJ decided today, I'm going to be in a wheelchair by 40. Mm -hmm. He had to have consciously made that decision. I've never seen... AJ's done some stupid things. He did so many stupid things in this one match. 
Usually it's like one big, dumb, stupid thing per match. He did about five. Yeah, just over and over. And at some point I announced, you know what? I don't care about AJ Styles anymore. (laughs) I am out of sympathy for this man. Kill yourself, AJ. I'm cool with that. Aces. I would not go that far, but he... It's just... Why... Why do so many people have to get hurt before they start working smarter? Why can't you start working smarter before you get hurt? I'm going with the theory that he's just dumb. I don't know. It's so anyway, I mean, they had a they had a good match, and he killed himself to have a good match. Yes. And uh, then you steal a lot of shitty finishes. When you steal the worst finish off WWE house shows, something's wrong. Your company sucks. AJ fell down and grabbed his knee. Mm-hmm. Boy, my knee hurts, he said. I heard a pop. I heard a pop. The announcer, or the, yeah, the announcers. We'll get to the announcers in a minute. The medics came down, and, and boy, when, you, when you're trying to pretend a guy's hurt for real, don't let the guy try and stand up on his own and the doctor just stand there to see what'll happen. <laughs> Bad doctor. If I get a spike through my uh, head and the doctors show up, they ain't going to wait and have me go, let me try and pull it out and see what happens. They're going to do what they need to do. So he's feigning injury and that sort of thing, and, and the, the doctors, I guess, it took the whole team of doctors to go tell Dave Penzer that the match was over. And as they're going over there, AJ flew into the ring, cradled him using the tights, which was not a DQ this evening, and got the pinfall. Right. Well, we assume. We never actually saw the pinfall because the camera stayed on the announcer. Yep. The camera was focused on Dave Penzer. A close-up of Dave Penzer who watched the pinfall with no reaction. No reaction. <laughs> Which was actually the funniest reaction he could have done. <laughs> so AJ went and he's dancing up the ramp and that sort of thing. And to me, this is this is what I hated most about the finish. You didn't do the finish, fine. Just go for it. To me, the dumbest thing was they kept showing a replay of the dive where he supposedly blew out his knee. And today and Don West were like, oh, there it is, right there, look, look at his knee, right there, that's it. They, they, were, they, were, they were showing us where he blew out the knee, and they were insisting that that's where it happened. And in the end, he hadn't. And I thought, nothing like an announcer seeing something that ultimately was not there. I mean, that was a credibility killer to me. Well, they have no credibility. <laughs> <laughs> you can't kill what's already dead, son. Oh. Yeah, and I think pretty much everyone hated this. So thumbs down for this. I gave it three and a quarter for the actual match. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the match was fine, but it lets such a bad taste in your mouth. Well, all like, the finishes did. Yeah. I can't. That was the theme of this show. And the, I can't fault the guys for a shitty finish. It's not like AJ They just said, did what they were told. I've got this bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A fake Vince McMahon was backstage with a chicken in a cage. And I uh, did this wacky deal and started it off, and the blonde chick says, only in TNA. Yeah. Only in TNA where they make fun of Vince McMahon. You won't see that anywhere else. Only in TNA. They, 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 they made fun of Vince McMahon. They said he wore ill-fitting suits and walked funny and liked cock. Yeah. And uh, you won't see that anywhere else. Yeah. Only in total nonstop action on Spike TV. Yeah. The flag match was next. The rules. I don't need to read the rules. You can read the newsletter. It was a flag match. It was every other flag match. They just explained them in as complicated a manner as possible. They had a another good match. It's probably maybe the best match these teams have had. They don't. Well, they've only worked together once at a time. One at a time, have they? They've worked together. AMW and LAX. They worked together like four straight pay per views or something. Are, Are you, you sure? You've got to be kidding me. No, because the LAX was feuding with Daniels and AJ. I'm gonna go back and look, and you're. Gonna I look. am right. Oh God, do I need to go back right now? No. Jesus Christ. AMW versus LAX in the flag match. They uh, did all sorts of wackiness. Gale got involved. I love tributes to Eddie Guerrero, but when you're one of the two most diabolical heels in the entire company, three Migos ain't going to cut it. Homicide needs to knock it off. It's like you're getting to him as a heel, and then all of a sudden everybody has to cheer him because he's doing a tribute to Eddie. It's weird. Uh, They're... They're kind of cool heels anyway, which maybe is bad. <laughs> but that's, there was, that's not what heels are supposed to be. Yeah, but regardless, up until the main event, this is my favorite match on the show. They all worked really hard. This is not like last month where they were on totally different pages. They all killed themselves to get over. They killed themselves to make each other look good. It was just good times. So uh, then we had, uh, yeah, the finish, the finish was sucked. Um, Conan got involved, and this poor guy can't move. I think he may be getting hip surgery like this week, which he desperately needs. He was pretty much hopping on one leg. 
uh, beat up Gale. They, uh, Petey Williams ran in, that sort of thing. Hernandez took him out, big flying dive, that sort of thing. Harrison Homicide were on the ladder, and James Storm broke a bottle over Homicide's head. But the glass went into Chris Harris's eyes, so they both fell off the ladder, and then Hernandez climbed up, hung the flag, got the win, and James Storm was irate at his partner afterwards, was screaming at him. Gail was screaming back, he's got glass in his eye. So they're breaking up. It appears James Storm is going to be the heel, and uh, Chris Harris and Gail Kim together are going to be baby faces. Probably not for the best for the team. Um, no one's sad they're breaking yeah. up, I've <laughs> noticed. No one cares anymore. A year ago they were appalled, but... I'm not sure. I I initially thought James Storm will be better off. He's got more personality. Chris Harris is like a statue. However, Chris Harris is the better worker, and he's got the girl. Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> they may both be fucked, for all I know. I don't know how this is going to turn out, but uh, we shall see what happens. I don't see either of them as, as single stars. That's for sure. I it? predict they'll be exactly where they are right now. So, the point of this was afterwards they had to play the national anthem come on cut this great promo said this was probably the first time in history that the u.s team had lost a flag match and even mike Tanay says that's probably true <laughs> <laughs> they hung the flag they played the mexican national anthem which i which does in fact exist i will admit i had never heard this before as horrible as that sounds <laughs> i had never heard it i was expecting i presume everybody that watch, watches soccer <laughs> Jesus, that's I racist. Know. That was, in fact, racist. I apologize, but you laughed. I did. Yeah, I laughed harder when you said they should have played tequila. I said tequila during the show. I, uh, I I presume that during soccer games, people hear this anthem all the time, but I'm not a soccer fan, so uh, I'd never actually heard it. And uh, it seemed to go on about ten minutes, which actually was fine because it was a great, happy, wacky anthem. Every every second longer that this went, the greater it got. <laughs> it did. Conan was so happy. Conan was grinning ear to ear. Mirthful. I, I have never, I don't think I've ever seen Conan look so overjoyed. I, no, I have not. <laughs> this is like the, he was standing there looking like, this is the pinnacle of my career. He was. He was like a proud father. He was. All, all the work, all the pain, the fact that I can't walk, it's all worth it for this song and this flag right now. By the time this was over, I was like, that was the best moment of the whole year. <laughs> that made me so happy. Yeah. Oh, that was And great. the best part was, Conan dared the announcers to stand with him. And today is like, well, I don't respect you. I don't respect your actions, but I will respect that flag. I see the announcers shut up. <laughs> it was three wrestlers in the ring, various camera angles. Most of the fans were standing and saluting. One fan turned his back on this, which is most amusing because it was a blatant plug for his drywall service. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That was awesome. This, this was just so great. Oh, I love this. This was great. So then... Uh, Things went off a cliff right here. VKM came out. They were dressed up like Hunter and Sean. They did the DX entrance. They beat up five male cheerleaders. They had a fat, oily, hairy guy. And uh, finally, BG said, cut the music. Sometimes he said people in this business have trouble differentiating, differentiating between parody and reality TV. That's true. We were seeing it here. He said this was a parody, but what he was about to say was real. I ain't Paul Levesque, he said. That's for damn sure. And this man, he damn sure ain't Michael Hickenbottom. <laughs> Never have truer words been spoken in He's, this business. He is an honest man. you got to say that. He is a very honest man. Now... This was another one of those, I, there's nothing I love better than a promo that's so inside, I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> I, I follow this business as closely as, as I can. For like 10 years now. For 11 years doing this newsletter. And I have no idea. I What I could fit together was that apparently WWE has sent a legal letter to TNA, a cease and desist for the VKM segments. That's what I, I figure is, must have happened here. They were talking about it like everybody knew the entire backstory, mm-hmm. which we don't. So, basically, to cut to the chase here, BG James and Kip James have challenged Vince McMahon and DX to a fight with one million dollars on the line. A million dollars. One million dollars. And uh, Mike Tenay was insisting this is real. This one million dollars is legit. 
Here's what I got out of this whole thing. First off, the whole idea is stupid. Mm-hmm. This whole idea is just a waste of, of – and I'll tell you why. B.G. James, as dumb as a promo was, he cut a great promo. Fair enough. He was a passionate man. Yes. He hates these motherfuckers. <laughs> that he does. He will fight them for a million dollars. Oh, he'll fight them for free. The fans were going nuts. The yeah. fans were jumping up and down and screaming and going crazy. Sure. And I thought, you know what? Why can't you create a feud? <laughs> Why can't you cut this promo on and let him the cut naturals. this great promo on a team in TNA hey. where you can actually do the match? Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Why <laughs> why couldn't he have gotten this angry at the Dudleys? Or uh, the Diamonds in the Rough? Anyone? No, the Dudleys. Okay, Dudleys. Yeah. A- AJ and, uh, if they were still together, AJ and uh, Daniels. That would have been good, too. Uh, the Geeks and Nash's crew. Sure. Why can't you make a storyline, let people cut a passionate promo... And then book the match on your own goddamn pay-per-view. I don't have the answer to these questions. They are coming out and cutting passionate, spirited promos and getting the crowd excited for a match. That will never. That will never happen. Ever happen. And they're wasting time on a pay I paid four bucks for this, too. Yep. On this pay-per-view, I paid four dollars for an interview segment for a match we will never see. And I paid four dollars for a bikini contest I didn't want to see. Yeah. Thumbs down. This was one of the stupidest things I've ever seen. First of all, uh, I, I'm glad BG and Kip can get the uh, thousand fans or whatever it is in Orlando, the, 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 the same fans come every week. I'm glad you've convinced them that DX sucks. Meanwhile, the fans in every other city that Raw goes to, hey, they think DX is pretty cool. And you know what? <laughs> DX was, is over, everyone. We saw this in ECW. We saw this in ECW so many times. If DX went to the Impact Zone, they'd be gods. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's also true. They would be gods. If you went to the Impact Zone and you put Triple H and Shawn Michaels at a booth, and you put uh, M- uh, MLK or whatever gimmick is in another booth, <laughs> the fans would swarm. Actually, if you put MLK in the other booth... That, they, Martin Luther King. Yes. They'd swarm to him. But if you put uh, BG and Kip and you put uh, Triple H and Shawn in separate booths, there would be four fans by uh, BG and Kip, and they'd only be there because as there was no room fans, <laughs> they would get uh, attention paid to them by uh, BG and Kip. Or there was no room, yeah. yeah. They would be gods in that uh, building. Instead, I don't know. So they came out in this makeup, like they're all hundreds of thousands of years old. I'm pretty sure that Kip James is as old as those guys. Kip James is the oldest of them all. Yeah. <laughs> Kip James is like, I think, three years older than Sean, uh, Sean, Yeah, which would make him about five or six years older than Hunter. Yeah, and and, and BG James can't be that much younger than them. These men are all about the same age. Yeah. So uh, then they come out, and their their whole mission, as I understand it, they want WWE and DX to stop making bad TV. Even though you would think as the competition, you would want their show to suck as bad as you can. Sure. So they, they don't like the skits that DX does. They don't like... Watching them beat up cheerleaders and watching them dance with a naked, oily guy. So they bring out male cheerleaders and a fat, naked, oily guy. And they do exactly the same thing DX does. Only worse. Only shittier. <laughs> Somehow this constitutes a parody. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> so then <laughs> they use the word million dollar challenge over and over and over again. They never actually said how the million dollars ties into the fight they want. Are they... Offering that to Vince and DX to come fight? Are they saying the winner gets the million dollars? Are they challenging them to put up a million dollars of their own and it's winner take all? I don't know. I, I presume they will give a million dollars to DX. And the best part of all is, if that's the bait, can you imagine Vince and Man going, wait a minute, one million dollars? <laughs> yeah. All I have to go to do is go to Orlando and fight a redneck? And I get a million dollars? Oh, boy. <laughs> this segment fucking sucked. It pissed me off. Wow. It's a lot of passion. It was a lot of passion. Just a bad... I was angry about it. Jeez. I wasn't angry. Completely without merit. What was funniest is it's like somebody read the Bischoff book and picked some the two dumbest things he did and decided to try and <laughs> do them. Put him on one angle. And try and do them worse. Oh, God. Remember when he challenged Vince? That I do was... remember that. And, and, 
And he got a legal letter. They must not have read that part about it. WWE is going to be on the war path for this one. Good. And, uh, and also win. the WCW $1 million challenge that lasted a week before management put the XNA on that one. Oh, yes, WCW is back, children. And, in fact, as Christ Almighty, as a man of God, a reverend, I will say this, I wrote originally Abyss versus Sting versus Christian for the WCW title. And it wasn't until I went back that I went, wait a second. NWA that company's title. dead. <laughs> that company's been dead for five years. Again, they had a uh, decent match until the uh, wacky finish. And this finish was even wackier than usual. Oh, that's true, actually. What they did... First off, I gotta say that the highlight of this was when the fans were chanting Chris. They weren't <laughs> chanting Chris. There was a moment <laughs> where I, I, I think Abyss had the thumbtacks and he was he was hesitant. Yes. He thought perhaps I should not sin with these thumbtacks. And the fans tried to appeal to Abyss by chanting Chris, 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 Chris. <laughs> and then Jake Chris ran out. No, he didn't. Not really. No. So what happened at the end was there was thumbtacks and all sorts of wackiness, and they booked a botched spot. That was, in fact, the finish. Abyss sent Sting to the ropes for the black hole slam, and as he spun him around, Sting was supposed to bonk into Christian and knock him out of the ring. And it basically, everyone ran into each other and fell down. <laughs> that is pretty much what happened. And Abyss got the pin. So all this needed was like coconut sounds. Now, here's, here's what happened. Last month, Sting offered to do the job to Abyss clean. And TNA said, no, we're doing this DQ finish. So apparently at some point in the last three weeks, they decided, okay, you want to put the guy over? Fine. He can beat you clean in this match. So they fucked this finish up so bad yeah. that it looked like a mistake, and the impact was such that in no way did it even remotely begin to get over. I, I like how, by when the way... You, when you read in the results that, that Abyss Pin Sting, and it's like, oh my god, Abyss Pin Sting... You didn't watch it. <laughs> That's, yeah. If you watched this, this in no way was, was anything special. This may have been worse for Abyss than last month, actually. And I also, no. No, okay. <laughs> but I do like how in, in 2006 in TNA, clean includes Thumbtacks and Tyson Tomko running around. <laughs> and Tyson Tomko hitting the ref, which last month was a DQ and a title change. Yeah. And this month was nothing. I also love, uh, the tacks were dropped in the ring and then not used for a while, and, uh, Abyss was teasing, choke slamming Christian, I think, into the attacks, and, and Tomko kicked him in the face. So Abyss fell down and got to his hands and knees over by the ropes. And then he crawled over to the, the attacks and placed his face over them and just waited. <laughs> Time passed. Fans said, What's going on? Why is his face over the attacks? Is someone going to hit him? Yes, here comes Tomko. And finally, Tomko ran over and stomped his face in the attacks. And you know what's funny is a few months back, after about the 80th tax thing, I wrote, you know, the tax mean almost nothing now. Now? They mean nothing. They've actually gotten less, yes. They mean nothing. The thumbtacks bore me. Yeah. Who cares? They have killed thumbtacks. That takes talent. That's amazing. To the face, mind you. Sure, yeah. 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 The thumb thumbtacks and dude's face is like, yep, seen that. Yeah, th so this was... You're dumb. This was not good before the finish, and then it just sucked. But even before that, there was... These pathetic, half-hearted, let's go, Christian, let's go, Sting. Yeah, and no one just, cared. No one, they were trying, but they didn't give a shit. they got to get out of the impact zone for, for some of these pay-per-views. TV's fine. Give the, keep giving the fans the TV, but the impact zone pay-per-views, I don't know. Angle and Joe 2, 20 minutes long. Actually, it was like 1912 or something of that nature, but about 20 minutes. I thought the funniest part of this match was when they did the Daniel Pewter spot. They did, in fact, do the Daniel Pewter spot where Joe hooked a key lock and uh, Angle covered him with his arm in the, the in the lock. And this is pro wrestling, so the ref countered and, and Joe released the hold. But The thing is, is Vince McMahon, for the rest of his life, will be doing Montreal finishes because he was involved. There's There's some sort of psychological mishap that has occurred. Where Vince needs to keep doing it over and over and over and over and over again. Perhaps to prove to himself that what he did was right. Sure. I don't know. I, I, I don't understand Vince McMahon. <laughs> I'm not Freud. But Angle, I, I, just, I determined tonight, and we'll see if I'm correct, for the rest of his life, he will be attempting to prove to himself that he would have won that fight with Daniel Pewter. He had Pewter pinned. Because if you'll notice, what happened here was Joe put him in the Kimura, Angle fought and fought. Angle 
leaned over so that Joe's shoulders were down. The ref counted two, and, and Joe kicked out. And Angle immediately got on him and continued beating on him and dominating him. Yeah. Because the story is that had that not been a pin, Angle was not going to submit. Daniel, no. Daniel Peter did not have him. Right. Angle would have beaten this man. Yeah. And for the rest of his life, I bet we will be seeing weird variations of this as Angle attempts to prove to himself that he did, in fact, beat Daniel Pewter and would have beaten him had uh, the ref not done what the ref did. But anyway, other than that, great match. Yeah. We mentioned it before. Uh, we'll talk about the finish here. The ref took a bump, and boy, did that kill the crowd. Well, okay. We the the, the, the it went almost well, yeah, almost 20 minutes, and the last four minutes was just Awesome of reversal to ankle lock, reversal to choke. Okay, so you throw the angle slam in there, or, or, or Joe T's the muscle buster, but so there you got some near falls, but and the fans were just eating everything up. I did feel it was slightly overkill. It, I, I can see that it could have been, um, but but by and large people were totally into it, and were, and were just, the, the the place was jumping. And when I say jumping, I mean people were leaping up and down in excitement and glee and joy. And then they did this ref bump, and it was just. Whoosh. If all the spirit, all the all all the energy just sunk. So they did the ref bump. Joe put J- Joe. In... Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, I'm cutting you off. <laughs> well, you cut me off, and you didn't even know what you were going to say. Is the best. Well, I, I I I started to talk, and then I realized, wait, I'm cutting him off. That's rude. Well, tell me what was going to happen then. They did the ref bump, and Joe immediately locked in the choke. And Angle fought and fought, and this was like the third or fourth time he'd been in it. And he teased tapping, he teased tapping, and finally he started to tap. And no one cared because they knew it was the ref bump. Yeah. The ref is still down. So Joe released the hold. He went over to look at the ref. Angle got to his feet, walked up behind Joe, and just punted him in the balls. Yeah. Just kicked him right in the groin. He went to get a chair. uh, Joe was getting to his feet. Angle charged Joe. Joe ducked. Angle did the whack the ropes with the chair spot and bonk himself in the head. And Joe put the choke back on. And the ref came to. And uh, Angle tapped out again. The one thing, the, the one thing about this that, that, I mean, well, here's the thing. I was so bummed because <laughs> the, the energy was sucked out of me as well by the ref bump. I was like, I can't believe they 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 had the one guy win and then they they swerved us and the other guy won. And I thought, wait a minute, no, Joe won both times. Yeah, it was so fucked up. It didn't even occur to me that the right man won in the end. Yeah, I, I had forgotten completely. Well, I had to think about it. Say, wait a minute, no, he 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 deserved to win. The uh, the promo that Angle cut when he goes, "Win, lose, or draw, this is the last match ever." That's when I knew. You you, you knew, yeah. I, I knew. I, I knew too, but still. Because there, I knew there had to be a reason. Joe had to win, and there had to be a reason for Angle to demand a third match. And if he said win, lose, or draw, if he just lost, he should be fine with it. Now I realize that. I should preface this by saying that I'm looking for logic in a TNA storyline. So cool. if I had been completely wrong, you know, things happen. But So I figured, okay, there's got to be some sort of finish where Angle in some way, you know, loses either via a fluke or via a run-in or something weird where he's got something to bitch about. And this was it. The one thing I didn't like is if you're going to do something weird like this, Okay, when Angle was the wacky goofball in WWE, the bouncing the chair off the top rope in your own head, that's hilarious. Mm -hmm. That's a great spot. When you're the wrestling machine, and you're like the most unstoppable man in the world. and this The man who beat Joe. The man who beat Joe. You're such a geek that you bounce the chair off the ropes in your own head. What a dork. I don't think they should have done that one. And I love it when Angle does it, but it didn't work in this match. This match did not need a dork. (laughs) No. And he also has. We also uh, when he when he pulled when Joe pulled him into the choke, he pulled him in by the uh, trunks. I don't know why. Yeah, that was. I, it was like Angle was trying to escape, and, and and Joe was trying to pull him down by the trunks, and Angle had the ropes. I expected the ref over to come over and kick his hands away. It was, it was like that. That spot. would have been even worse. Yeah, I, I agree. That's <laughs> but, that's opening match bullshit. But yeah, so uh, Angle tapped out, and uh, they'll have Joe Angle three, which uh, knowing TNA will take place in January. I predict it will take place this week on Impact. It could. You could actually be right. <laughs> I would not put that past them. But uh, anyway, that was the uh, pay-per-view kids. Like I said, thumbs in the middle, pointing slightly up, because Joe Angle was an excellent man. If you really, really like good wrestling and can accept that bad booking does not necessarily mean bad wrestling, then you should get this replay. Yeah, this was, and like I said, you know, you should have known going in what you were going to get. 
But if you can if you can handle that sort of thing, if you can handle great wrestling until a bunch of horrible finishes, then this was the pay per view for you. So that was the uh, deal. Like I said, thumbs in the middle, pointing a little bit up. Much better than ECW last week. Oh God, yes. Just in case anybody Jesus. wants to uh, compare those two brands, and uh, nobody will be fired tomorrow. They should fire Russo, but he won't be. They should also fire the director. And the director. Jesus, that guy should be fired. And he's been doing it for a long time. Yeah. Well, maybe he was sick and they had a new guy tonight. I don't know. No, because they've sucked for a while. Everybody was happy with the pay-per-view at TNA, though. I can uh, tell everybody that. So uh, this was not like... Actually, I think everybody was happy with ECW as well until they read the reviews. But uh, tonight at the... That uh, cannot be true. Management was uh, very happy. So that's the story there. So... As I mentioned, Vince does not know who the special guest is, so it's going to be a surprise to him as well. So, hold on, everybody, and we'll and you will not guess this guest. I would guess. I wasn't even trying to. Vince, guess. Brent Kramen. Three guesses. That was one. You just failed. Okay. Uh, he's uh, the, the Lance Storm. That's two. I'm wrong then. Yeah, Lance is going to get on the air at uh, <laughs> 1:40 a.m. Calgary, Calgary time. Oh, uh, Craig. Hold on a second, kids. Here we go. You have 1,425 minutes for this call. We're going to be on the phone for a long time. you got to pad that calling card, kids. (laughs) (laughs) That was a new one. That was the guest, by the way. No one's going to actually use it. Jubs? Yo. Jubs! You're on the air, buddy. What's up, man? Um... Nothing much. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you'll fit in fine. I didn't even know we were going to talk to you. What's going on? I didn't tell Vince we were going to call you up, so it was a big surprise. I'm kind of disappointed yeah, you're not a, what Craig. What a horrible surprise. Well, I, I am a little disappointed you're not Craig, but that's only because I guessed Craig and now I am wrong. Yeah. But frankly, if I'm going to be wrong, I may as well be wrong and be with my buddy Jubs. Jubs, how you doing? What uh, would you wager? Nothing. We didn't put oh. money on this, Sam. Yeah. Vince, Vince is a poor man. Yeah. So. It, it, just, just my pride. Yeah. Jebs, what's new lately? Um, nothing's new. He, here's the deal, everybody. Here's why Jebs <laughs> on the line. Jebs, uh, we, we tried to get him on the line to talk about the Battle of L.A., and he refused. And then out of the blue today, he he agreed to come on the show to defend the TNA product. <laughs> see. Jebs, Jebs I, I believe, is a huge fan of Vince Russo. I believe we had a lot of arguments about uh, young Vince Russo when we were in California. What is it about Vince Russo Jubs that uh, that you're such a fan of? Um, well, first I just want to say, uh, how's the weather? Because in California or in Los Angeles, it's it's beautiful. <laughs> Same here. Yeah, it's 80 great. degrees, oddly enough. It's great up here. No, we just ranted for 10 minutes about how shitty the weather was. Basically, so. no one has power and I don't have cable. And and uh, four people have died and 700,000 people are out of power and that's uh, half of the number that were out of power. Other than that, things are great. So tell us about uh, Vinny Rue. <laughs> um, I don't know. I just think that he gets a bad rap for stuff that he, um, I guess, did in the past. But, like, right now, the I, I really like the TNA product. I should note that the last couple of TNA pay-per-views, you have sent me texts. In the middle of the show, I'll get a text saying, This show's great. Best pay-per-view of the year. And at first I was like, what's going on with Jubs here? Why is he telling me this? This ain't that great a pay-per-view. And then it soon dawned on me that these are the Vince Russo shows. And Jubs, Jubs, were you watching TNA before Vince Russo came along? Uh, yes, I actually watched it when he first started in the weekly pay-per-view. Okay, what? Which actually I thought was the, the best period. So, <laughs> um, because I, I like the, uh, the, the SEX angle and uh, that whole group and against the old timers and stuff like that. I really like that. Okay, now the thing is when I, I almost all that era out of my mind. Yeah, when I I, look, I know he's talking about it, I don't remember much. When I look back on that era, I have almost no memory except for that the Dups and their outhouse brawl. What'd you think of that one? Uh repeat that? The the the, uh, the Dups and the the outhouse brawl? Remember they had some stupid well, the Dup Cup. The Dup Cup. Yeah, the Dup Cup. How can you not like that? <laughs> so you actually awesome. were a fan of the Dup Cup. Um, no, not really. I wasn't, uh, I actually don't remember quite 
a lot of, of that, but after when the SEX angle started, and that's when it was like, wow, this is awesome. Here's one one memory I have of that that era. AJ was their heel world champion, and Vince Russo was his manager or psychic or whatever, and they cut a promo from a, a swimming pool somewhere. <laughs> and they're cutting yeah, this AJ heel promo, dive. and AJ said, hey, Vince, I learned a new flip. And, she, and the World Wrestling Heavyweight Champion did a flip into the pool. I remember that, and I will admit, Jubs, that was great. <laughs> I, I cannot deny that. And really, Jubs, actually, this was a this was a bad week for you to come on because the last two weeks of TNA have been significantly worse than this week's show. This wasn't the world's greatest show or anything like that, but two weeks ago, Jubs, that was a horrible show. Two weeks ago was the worst wrestling show I've ever seen. You you may disagree with that, but uh, I thought that was the most horrible show I'd ever seen in my life. And uh, last week was pretty bad, but not to that level. And this week was, I don't even know how to describe this week. It's fine. <laughs> the wrong word. It was. It, it was, was flawed. It was all right. Yeah. Here's another thing I'd ask you, Jeb. Did you watch a lot of Vince Russo during the uh, WCW era? Um. I mostly watched uh, WWE. So you didn't see that? I, I know a lot of the stuff that happened. But you didn't actually watch it? You didn't see the Millionaire's Club? Um, and the New Blood? No, nah, not really. All yeah. right, so we can't talk about that. That was some bad shit right there. I just want to throw that out there. But well, let's talk about well, this. But I, oh, go ahead. Or I just wanted to say that uh, are, are the shows for the past couple weeks bad because you think that Russo is, is booking everything? Yes, we're biased. That's why we think they're bad. <laughs> No, the, the the one the, the the one that we hated so much, it was written to be a two hour show, and then they did it in one hour. It was well, I I remember you saying how the jackass angle had Vince Russo all over it. It did, but in reality, he had nothing to do with it. Hold on a second. So let me go back to that one right there. The jackass deal occurred, and I stated that had Russo's fingerprints all over it, and. and you Wrong. No, hold on a second. The I believe it was the torch site that same day came out and said, "Oh no, it was Jay Lethal and the crew that had come up with this whole idea." Oh, that's also wrong. If you'll recall, about uh, two days after that, they totally stopped saying that this was their idea, and it became nobody knows who is responsible for this. And uh, the Observer stated the same thing. Nobody knows who is responsible for this because nobody was going to take any credit for this horrible bullshit. So are you telling me that I'm going to have I'm I'm breaking an exclusive on your show because I know it, who booked it. If you if you have an idea of who booked this, this well, will I, I in know fact, for a fact who did. How do you know for a fact? Were you there? Um. Well, I've spoken with people. Okay. Well, what, what's the story? <laughs> um. Actually, it was all um Jeremy Borash. What Jeremy Borash to? booked that whole thing. Yes. <laughs> and you uh, know, it's not unbelievable. <laughs> and this is your uh, fact. I 100% sure. Okay, I'll take your word for it. It still was bullshit. <laughs> whether Russo booked it or whether God booked it, it was horrible. So, with that said, this uh, the last couple of TNA shows, I will say the same thing. If it comes out that Jeremy Borash booked that show two weeks ago... That was still one of the worst TV shows I've ever seen. I will even go as far as to say this. If it comes out that Jim Cornette wrote that TV show two weeks ago, that was the worst show I've ever seen. I don't care if Vince Russo booked it. I don't care if Jim Cornette booked it, Vince McMahon. I don't care if you booked it, Jubs. I don't care if Vince booked it, Vince here uh, next to me. That was one shitty, horrible show. That's what I have to say about that situation there. But you thought it was fine? Um, yeah, I actually did not have a problem with it. All right. Is this a show, Joe's, with the three-way that went one minute and someone stole the pin? <laughs> for the number one contendership? And there was three friends fighting for no reason? Well, it, a lot of matches happen for no reason. Why would it matter that... First of all, they're not even, they weren't friends. I thought they, they established that Saban, you know, broke up with them. Okay, so if Saban broke up with the other two, why were the other two fighting each other? Shouldn't they or still the have been friends? Contendership. <laughs> so basically, everyone in TNA is a dick. We'll stab each other in the back for a title shot. Well, not. It's not like they turned on each other. They were scheduled for a match, so they wrestled. Okay. I, it, so you're, but you're saying so there has to be a story behind every match. It, yes, you're it's, saying how there's too many stories going on in TNA. No, they shouldn't so. have booked that match. That's what I'm saying. 
if you if you oh. have a if you have it would it would be like um let me think of a, a spirit squad. We've established that the spirit squad are all a team. They're all pals. You don't just see on a TV show with no announcement, no build whatsoever, a five-way match for the number one contender with all five Spirit Squad guys. You would never see something like that. If you picked any stable in, in New Japan or in Mexico, uh, Los Guerreros, Los Infernales, whoever, even though they broke up years back, we'll just pretend they're still together. Sure. Or there's, there's the Mephisto of Mexico. Guerreros del Mal. Yeah, any of those groups. You would never see on a random edition of CMLL television... Those guys just all in a match fighting each other to get a title shot. You would never see it in Japan. You would never see it in Mexico. You would never see it in WWE. You would certainly never see it in Ring of Honor. You would never see it anywhere. And it was just done on this show for for I, I don't even know why. They couldn't find two other men to go against Chris Saban where you could at least believe these, these three men don't like each other. Well, and, well what you just said was um, I, it has happened in WWE. Several times, like they'll, they'll go backstage and they'll show, um, you know, like when they're plugging a video game or something like that. They'll show like Paul London and Funaki or whoever, you know, playing the video game together. And then you know they have a match later on. I mean, it, it's yeah, but it's not it's a long established team. That's just two geeks in the back playing a video game. I'm talking about established pals and friends. Like, These guys do skit up? after skit together. Yeah, but did they ever like team up or anything? Saban, Dutton, and Lethal <laughs> regularly. Yeah. For months. <laughs> it would be like if you tuned in to, 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 if you're watching NWA in 1988 and you turned in, you tuned in and Stanley was wrestling Bobby Eaton. Just for no reason. Yeah. It, 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 when you could put any other man in the ring with Stan Lane or uh, any, any other man in the ring with Bobby Eaton or anybody else. Instead, just those three guys fought each other. It, it made, let's, let's, here, let's do this. Let's run down this show and we'll, we'll chit chat about it. This was um, the TNA show from Thursday. Open up with Angle threatening to uh, kill Borash because of the um, uh, skit that he booked. <laughs> I already <laughs> forgot. Angle was looking for Joe, and for some reason he was looking for Joe in the copy room. Sure. I'm still not sure why. He, but he wanted a rematch. That's the key. I'm all fine with that. Angle should want a rematch at this point. So then we had Robert Roode and Tracy in the ring. He was talking about how he was an unhappy man. That and Angle... Yes. Robert Roode said, I am not happy. And I laughed and laughed because we've not seen this man in anything other than anger in maybe ever. That's right. So he was in the ring. Oh, or I also want to say how a couple shows ago, um, I believe on the pay-per-view, you said how you were questioning uh, Roode's power because he said he was going to fire Tracy if he didn't, if she didn't sign uh, Eric Young. Well, okay. No, 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 no. That, that in, in and of itself... Will be okay because in theory she's his yeah. press agent. The problem is she's threatening to fire Eric. Well, because Eric is paranoid and he thinks everybody's going to fire him. Okay, so how, all right, fine. Let me ask you this that. question: If that's true and she has no power to fire Eric, and he's paranoid, and her job is to sign him to a contract or Robert Rude will fire her, why doesn't she just go, Eric? If you don't sign with Robert Rude, you're fired. We've already established that that Eric Young is afraid. To be fired, and he was willing do to do that. Yes. Hey, how do you know that that doesn't happen? Well, it hasn't it's... happened yet. She's <laughs> been looking for him now for two straight shows to sign this contract, and he hasn't done it yet. Why would she well, wait to pull show. out this card? Well, one show, and and on this show, well, she has to the pay per view. Showed them meeting up. They showed them meeting up, and then a couple seconds later, Engel came in. So, so you're thinking maybe next week to. So you're thinking perhaps next week she will threaten him with being fired? I probably, maybe, I don't know. Okay, well, we'll, we'll assume that next week she's going to do that. We can move on now. I'll right? bet she does. <laughs> we should be taking bets on this, but uh, you're poor and I'm cheap, so uh, sorry, Jubs. They, uh, Angle kicked Rude out of the ring and uh, just sent him packing. He was begging Joe for a rematch. Joe appeared on the screen, noted that Angle had said, win, lose, or draw, this is the last match, so he wasn't going to have it. So Angle freaked out and ended up uh, beating up Don West, put him in the ankle lock, and uh, left him screaming in agony. The security guys came out and actually calmly asked Kurt Angle to... Uh, this was so freaking great. <laughs> Angle and, and Don West were in the foreground of the shot. 
immediately behind them. They didn't even circle them because that would be a bad camera shot, I guess. They all came up on one side uh, of Kurt, and they all put up their hands and said, Kurt, stop. <laughs> yes. They didn't actually pull him off. Meanwhile, if you look even behind them, there's a third level. Mike's name was at the desk, sitting there, looking back and forth, <laughs> waiting for help to arrive. Yes. This was freaking brilliant. Now, actually, I will give this a thumbs up because, number one, Don West screaming was hilarious. There's always that. Even before that, Don West being in fear of Kurt. Yes. That was great. And number two, this show, there were improvements on this show, and I'll tell you this, Jubs. Here were the, the two main improvements that I saw on this show. Number one was that they put Cornette in the booth with Mike Tanay. Yes. This must be done every week. Jim Cornette is, is 8 million levels above Don West as far as explaining to the viewer at home what the fuck is going on yeah. so that they understand. Yes. That's and a positive. Not only what's going on, but what's really important. Yes. What is important? Well, I had a problem with one thing that Cornette did. Okay. And uh, that was during the tag match. And I believe um, Harris tagged in Storm, but the ref wasn't looking. But immediately when he tagged in Storm, Cornette's going, oh, but the ref didn't see it, the ref didn't see it, when the ref had yet to even turn his back to see if... So he, that's his like, point. He can, he, he... No, no, you know, he felt like he, he, he like, he, as in where he knew that um, he there called, would have to... He called the spot that. before it happened, basically. Yes. So they tagged, and Cornette saw, hey, the ref has his back turned, he won't be able to see that. When that hadn't mattered earlier. He, he called the spot early. That's pretty much what it was. All right. I'll I'll uh, I'll take that one. The uh, Where were we before we got it? Oh, and the other thing. The other thing they did that was positive <clears throat> was um, replays. They actually had replays on this fucking show. Indeed, they did. I almost had a heart attack. Like after the se- after commercial. After commercial, they came back with a replay. Cool. <laughs> I mean... I, I, in, in no way, in no way will I take credit for this, but Jesus Christ, we've been hyping, harp, harping on that one for like the past year. Year. That is the one thing they need more than anything else is replays. Because normally they do something, they go to commercial, they come back, they never let us know what happened, they never hammered into our heads, and it's so easily forgotten. That was a gigantic thumbs up for TNA for this week, so that was that. So then we had... Um, by the way, today was outraged, which is also always a thumbs up. When <laughs> yeah, so anytime you get Mike today giving a stern lecture. Yes. Abyss faced Ron Killings in a non-title match. Here's the thing t- t- uh, TNA does they need to stop doing. This was a match they actually gave probably seven minutes to, six minutes, somewhere around there. But they cut the commercial in the middle of the match. So we got about one minute, and then it came back, and we got about three minutes. So... It's one thing when WWE does a 20-minute match and you do a, ten, a commercial at the 10-minute mark. When you're doing a, a six-minute match and you've got a two-minute commercial break right in the middle of it, you might as well just have the match go two minutes and then go to commercial. It's it's pointless. So uh, that's what they did during this match here. And this beat him clean with the, uh, I guess it was clean. He was chasing Jim Mitchell through the ring and then he ran into the black hole slam. That was that. But uh, too short. Other than that, uh, no real problem with this. Um, Run Killings ain't happy there. They ain't happy with him because he's not happy there. But He'll no be... one has anywhere better for him to go. No, that's the deal. <laughs> so we had uh, Letitia interviewing Christian and Tomko backstage. Christian said Abyss owed him a rematch, and if he did not grant it to him tonight, he was going to reveal the big secret. They immediately cut to elsewhere backstage where uh, Eric was uh, being accosted by Tracy. She wanted him to sign the contract. He refused. She was frantic. And then up ran Joe, or Angle, I'm sorry. He was looking for Joe. Ended up uh, giving him a forum, laying him out. And they immediately cut. Like, the moment the bump occurred, they cut away. And I thought, you know, how many guys have taken great bumps right before a commercial and they immediately cut away and we forget all about it? And never see it again. They did at least in a video package show replay of James Storm taking the uh, the border toss into the wall. That is they, true. They have replayed that a few times. But this one, yes. Uh, Angle had this uppercut and Eric took this giant flying bump on the floor of the hallway. Yes. <laughs> and uh, like before he hit the ground, they cut away. Jebs, what do you think of the Nash skits? Um, well, have you seen the un the director's cut version of it? No, it does. We watch the TV show. <laughs> okay, well, it, it's basically, it's like eight minutes long. 
I, I, I will say this. A lot of the stuff Nash and Shelley did that was only on the, on, only on the Internet was way better than what was on TV. Yes. So so it, it, he may be right in that the extended versions are funnier, but that doesn't matter. They are not on. Because most people aren't watching YouTube. Well, I, I will say this, that if any company can get away with putting stuff on YouTube and getting some of their audience to watch it, it is TNA. They are more of an Internet company than pretty much anybody else. But eh, Ring of Honor, but... Uh, actually, that's yeah, true. Well, that doesn't, I'm talking about a nationally televised promotion. Okay, then. Well, they're the only other one, but yes. So, um, are these, I presume, YouTube jobs by eight minutes? Uh, yeah. Are the, ex- the extended director's cut? Yeah. What do you think of the TV versions? Um, they did a pretty good job cutting it down, and it, it brought characters. It, it, them characters, so. They are they are developing characters, such sort as of. Sanjay Dutt, the steroid freak. <laughs> and, uh, they, they are they are the funniest thing on the show, and I, I guess I can put it the same way I put it when uh, Nash first began killing the division. Division's dead, so who cares? We might as well get a laugh. I'd rather get a laugh at the expense of the X Division than watch a usual two minute match. It doesn't matter. So I guess I can't really. Uh, the, the only one I really have a problem with is Senshi. He's, he's getting just useless. Yeah, but I mean, he, I, I agree, but he's also useless in the division because there's nothing else for him. To I do. mean, there's nothing for him. So if, if he, and it won't happen, but if like the third week of this, he just snaps and kills all five men, it does. That would be great. It, it, that but, could work, and it also sort of works in that he is sort of the straight guy, and um, he he was doing knuckle push-ups, <laughs> which added <laughs> a little bit of comedy to the segment. But it, it could be it could be worse than what it is, but. Jobs, I've got to ask you about this because I hate it. Vince hates it. We don't understand it. We don't understand any point of it. The VKM skits. Your thoughts? Um, it gives something. Uh, it gives something to believe in. I beg your pardon. The crowd. The crowd really wants it. People who are, you know, just watching the show that you know is that aren't on the internet or anything. They think, a, hey, you know, it might happen. Okay, now they don't know if there's a deal between the, you know, the two promotions. They don't, they don't know that. But okay, let's just say you're Vince Russo. Where do you go with it? You can't have the match. The match is never going to happen. So what are we building for? They, WWE doesn't accept the challenge, so you're left to assume. You know, why aren't they accepting the challenge? So so the whole thing is to build an angle where WWE is cowards? Uh, pretty much. All right. So the theory then is that people are banned in WWE because DX are cowards, and then they'll start watching TNA. I will tell you why I hate this. I've mentioned this before. You're never going to get the match. The, the, the match is, is never going to happen. And... Here's the thing with WCW in 1998, when they invaded CNN Center. Number one, everybody knew that this was one thing about the war that was real. These two sides really did hate each other. And part of the reason it was fun was because both were huge, number one. And number two, you knew that you might get retaliation. Because this was the period where where Bischoff would be giving away results and... and, uh, you know, WWE guys were being sent to CNN Center, and it was back and forth. You were getting you; it was a give and take. There, you not only are you not getting the match in this in this whole deal, you're not even going to get a reaction. You won't even get Hunter and Sean on TV going, "Boy, we kill that VKM," but they're going to have to come here and and this and that. You're never going to get a reaction or a match. So I I have no idea what the point of wasting time in an hour is on these skits. Entertainment. Well, they're feeling there, too. <laughs> here's, here's my problem, and it's actually not even what Ryan said. They're attacking DX, talking about how, how DX sucks and how much they want to kick their ass. For 98% of the wrestling audience, DX is cool. <laughs> they like DX. So when they see, uh, the, the, they'll probably recognize the New Age Outlaws talking about how DX sucks. They'll think, boy, I'm glad DX got rid of these goofs. Yeah, I, um, go ahead, Jebs. Okay, it gets them TV time without actually having, you know, to watch them 
wrestle. That's so what's wrong with that? Would you rather be watching them hey, wrestle? Hey, he's got us there. That's the best <laughs> argument you've come up with all night. I will give you that one. I would much rather watch BG James Cup Pro. Yeah, I would rather watch him cut promos than wrestle. And I would certainly watch Kip James stand next to BG James getting a promo than wrestle. Okay, we we all agree on that then. So uh, then we had Joe. I love this segment, by the way. Joe comes out and uh, actually, I'm sorry, Angle came out. He's dragging SoCal Val to the ring by the hair. He stands on her hair. He's demanding Joe come out for the match. Cornette gets in the ring, and this is how he explains this. Okay, <clears throat> he says, per Joe's contract. I can't sign him to singles matches. No, a singles match um, against Angle. No, he, he, he said did. he couldn't sign him to singles matches. He, he, cannot, he, he did not have the power to sign Joe to any singles match he wanted. Joe had, a, Joe had to approve all singles matches. Basically. But he could sign him to tag team matches. Yes. So it's going to be Joe Angle in a tag match next week. And, and Angle, he said, could uh, convince Joe to have the match or whatever. But, I mean, I sat there and I thought, who's the dumber GM? <laughs> is it Jim Cornette for signing a guy to a contract with the stipulation being that he's not allowed to sign singles matches for this man without the man's permission, or well, the guy that signed MVP to a multi-million dollar contract? I can't decide which one's dumber. Uh, I, go ahead, Jeff. You go ahead. All right. I love it and hate it. I, I, I hate it because it makes him look stupid. I love it because Jim Cornette will not participate in anything if it just does not plain make sense. So <laughs> as, as, as he, it's like he took the bullet. He said, I'll be the one who looks dumb here, but by God, there's going to be logic in this. Sure. I also love the idea that Joe sat down with TNA to negotiate his contract, and they talked about dates, and they talked about money, and he said, oh, by the way, I demand veto power in all singles matches. <laughs> I don't care about tags and other royals. Yeah. Go ahead, Jebs. I, I, I heard it as can't uh, sign him to rematches, but in a singles match. But he can have them face each other um, as part of a tag team. But still, That's what, what he said. What kind of a wacky contract is that? But, it's not, a... but not where it's like, oh, I just... You can't have singles matches all together against anybody. So it says he, he, so it says he can't do rematches? <laughs> well, that's... If I... If I, I'm not... You know, it's the contract. There's I know, a lot but if, of he, contracts out there. if he can't do rematches, well, I guess he he accepted the rematch with. He has to agree to him. All right, and so he. I'll he, take your word for it, but uh, I heard it as Joe's contract stipulates that he cannot be signed to singles matches without his permission, which to me sounds for, completely for, absurd. Frankly, Jubs, even if you're right, even if it said you're not allowed to sign Joe to rematches, that's still absurd. <laughs> so then we had uh, AMW versus LAX. And a match thrown together for TV. This was not announced in advance, except if you want to say the top of the hour. AMW versus LAX. If AMW won, they got the titles. If they lost, they had to split up forever. Conan was there in a shark cage, since he can't move. And, uh, by the way, Conan's hip surgery is scheduled for Tuesday, for right. those of you wondering. He's doing the Monday night tapings. They're taping again Monday night, so they can get everything done before the uh, holiday break. And then he's going under the knife. So I presume some sort of injury angle of some sort on uh, Monday's TV. But they had 14 minutes left on the show when this started. And I thought, look at that. We're going to get a 14-minute main event with these big stipulations. And uh, what do we get? Two minutes. The match went two minutes. And uh, James Storm ran in with a beer bottle, broke it over his own partner's head. And after all these years, after all these years... They gave this break up two minutes, and they immediately cut to the back. And the only good thing about it is at least when they came back to commercial, they showed one replay of the whole deal. And it wasn't even the main event. on. It wasn't even the final thing on the show. Nope. They've been teaming for four years. Yep. And this was... You'll never see that again, by the way. This was a two-minute semi-main event match on, a, on the undercard of Christian's promo. Correct. I did not like that. Given 40 minutes preview time. Yes. Yes. This was, this is what everything we hate about TNA, really. Yeah. I mean, at the very least, can't this go on last? <laughs> I That would not have made me feel any better. It would have made me feel slightly better that at least they were main eventing their final match ever in two minutes for the breakup after four years. Jeff, your thoughts? Well, well, first off, uh, we've got I, you, I, don't we? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm processing it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love you, Jubs. <laughs> I wish we had a webcam for Jubs' 
processing here. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm, I'm not. I'm not jogging around. You know, while I'm thinking. I I, I see you kneeling, scratching the top of your head with your hand. <laughs> this is a geek. Go ahead, Jebs. Um. I don't think it went on last because if you know, isn't there a, um like uh like booking 101 uh or whatever it's called where you don't want to have the viewer um like leave the show like mad isn't that um on a TV show I, I think it's perfectly fine to have the fans leave angry yeah, the, the thing is if you do a bad ending to the TV show you give them the the the, the mean event afterwards where the heroes win well yeah idea is you get heat on the baby faces so folks turn tune in the next week to see revenge yeah, or yeah. something of that nature I, I would guess if you went down the line one half in fact more probably two thirds of all shows end with the heels on top and you and I mean also when you've got the breakup. You've got the breakup. You go off the air with that. It's like, God, we got to tune in next week. What's going to happen? Are they going to fight? Are they going to be mad at each other? What's happening here? I mean, that that was a fucking cliffhanger. And it wasn't the end of the cliff. <laughs> the, the cliff was a short cliff. It was a very small cliff. It was a curb hanger. Sure. I, I can't agree okay. with you on this one. I can't think of any... Yeah, yeah ignore, 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 ignore that. Okay, i got, I got a better reason. Okay. If, you were ha- if they were having a fight, why would... The uh, the guy who's turning, why would Storm um, not hit Harris as soon as possible? Okay. Like, why would he... All right, hold on. This is a very good question, Jubs, but he didn't. Because in the two-minute match, he ran wild on the heels before the referee got him out of the ring, at which point he got the bottle and then attacked his partner. So whether okay. this match was two minutes that, or 14 minutes, he still was beating up the other guy. Well, that that actually does not bother me because he could still hate LAX and hate yeah, Chris Harris as well. he still hates LAX. That's sure. why he have, up with uh, Harris. Is but Jeb's argument is why didn't he hit him immediately? That's why the match couldn't go long. Well, he wanted them to beat him up first. But, uh, but the point I'm making is whether it went long or short, he still didn't hit him first. <laughs> no, because he had, he had no problem with LAX beating up Harris. He had no problem beating up LAX. Well, he got in. And then that's when he... Yeah, so this still could have gone 14 minutes with this same exact I philosophy. I see. It could have been 14 minutes of Harris getting his ass kicked. Yeah, and then, okay. and then Storm runs in and makes a big comeback and then hits his partner. Okay. Because What's there between 14 minutes and 2 minutes? It was the, the match would have been wrestled the exact same way. Can't agree with you there, Jubs. Uh, I don't know. I, I see Vince, or I hear Vince kind of agreeing with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, honestly, <laughs> if, if they do that, then it's like... If you're going to do the DQ finish, why don't you do it in two minutes? Okay, so why was it at the I did, I, last segment on the show? I don't have a good answer for that one. Because then when you see there's, uh, like, it is, it's uh, like 9.58 and the match is starting, and you know the show is going to end at uh That's on o'clock. every show. You can't use that excuse. It was even worse when you were a oh, huge fan of Teenage Mutant that gonna... fucking clock. It was telling you how long till the match was over. Here's the, here's the deal. It's like the, 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 the viewer goes, oh, it's, it's obviously something's going to happen in, in, in two minutes. Yeah, they like, said that when TNA had a giant fucking clock on FSN. When it was like this match. So? Because the, the match, the, the, the it, clock would say ten minutes. But the show would have yeah, seven minutes left on the show. So you knew the match was going to end with three minutes left on the clock. And it happened every time. You'll notice that they, they have they since gotten rid it. of the clock. What that's was that? why they stopped using it. Yeah, but, I mean, they used it for long enough that they were dumb. <laughs> yeah, but remember, that was in Fox Sports when not a lot of Fox people Sports were watching Fox Sports may have made them use that. Oh, okay, fine. The, um... Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Victory goes would, to me. It would not be a phone call to the Jobs if we did not get one. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, I see he's marking it down on a little, uh, his little chalkboard right there. But um, let me just ask, the Horseman Beatdown, how many of those ended in a uh, minute? He usually got a little bit of a match first. So I'd throw that in there. I believe you're right. The show ended with Christian coming out, demanding Abyss either give him the shot or he would reveal the secret. Abyss came out, and uh, he attacked both guys. Christian did not just grab the mic and reveal the secret, I should add. He decided to try and fight the giant monster. So they were fighting. Abyss was beating up referees. Cornette was irate. He hit the ring. Abyss goozled him. Lights went out. Sting appeared in the ring. The gimmick is that Sting is the only other person who can talk sense to the monster. And so he talked him out of letting go of Cornette and goozling Mitchell. 
And uh, then Mitchell talked him out of that. The show went off the air, and uh, that was that. I look at the final segment here. I don't know why this could not have gone before the uh, breakup after four years of AMW. And I stand by that, goddammit. Overall, I have to give the show a uh, thumbs in the middle. And I've given a lot of thumbs down lately to TNA. Yeah, thumbs in the middle is a huge step upward. It is a huge step upward, so. They, 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 they're they pushing the two main programs, which are Angel Joe and the World title. Yep. And uh, we know they have the ANW breakup to work off now. It was it was slower paced. That's good. That is very good. And they had a replay. And, and Cornette. And fucking Cornette. So actually this was a thumbs in the middle pointing slightly up. I'll give you that, Jobs. Jobs, we're going to have to have you back on one of these uh, shows one of these days when the show is just wretched. And then we can really have a good argument. This wasn't the best day to have this argument because uh, we could largely agree that it was not a uh, horrible show. But uh, I suppose you'd give the show a thumbs up. Yes, I would. Now, we're going to keep you on the line here for a se- uh, second here, because we have two things that I need to discuss with you. One, we're, yeah, exactly. One, we're going to talk a little bit about TNA, because I know that you watched at least part of that show. But yeah. first off, I'm sure you've heard the rumblings. You probably don't know the specifics. I don't know if many people on our website know the specifics, but those that have listened to the PPH radio show and those that have visited the board are aware that Brent Kremen has been institutionalized. What? You didn't know this. Well, I, you know, I read something on the board, and I, you know, it's hard I, to tell when somebody's being, you know, with him, it's hard to tell. It's, it's well, with serious. the board in general. With, yes. it is many, I, I read many things on the board and think, this is a bad joke or something. Sure. No. This person's yeah, full of shit. I thought, okay, but then, uh, you know, I was reading through it, and I, you know, I thought maybe it was true, so okay. Uh, or, or something where one of us will make a joke, and people will run with it. Yes. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's, what I that's, thought, that's the most common like that thing. Happens. Yeah, that's the most common thing. Well, the truth is that Brent Kremen has, in fact, been institutionalized. He, okay. is, he is in for nine days at this point, and in nine days, there is the potential that he could remain inside for an additional 90 days. His parents have alerted him that they don't think he's going to be in for 90 days, but he is extremely worried. And he is hoping that perhaps myself and Vince can go testify for him at a court hearing. And uh-huh. I asked him, what do you want me to say? Because I'm going to have to be honest about this. And he said, well, I want you to tell them that I'm always this crazy. <laughs> so I... <laughs> I well, Brent... <laughs> he, he called and left a message the other day. And he it, knows, but he does not understand. Let me see if I can... Hey, give me your microphone. We're going to try and play this message right here. Hold on, everybody. Okay, here we go. Oops, hold on. Hey, Brian, it's Brent Kremen live from Harborview Hospital via Mental Ward. My parents have put me here involuntarily. Um, Blake and Tina don't think I should be here. So uh, maybe you could go and we could do it like in three minutes with Brent Kremen live from the Mental Ward. Um, I'm sure that I would have a lot to say. So, um, how about if you give me a call here, even a visit, and in a couple of weeks I have a hearing, so maybe you could be a witness and say that I act this way all the time. Um, so, uh, you call me at Harborview Hospital. One of them. Yeah. That's, uh, Brent, huh. Brent Kremen, everybody. And I got that message yesterday, and you'll notice that Brent was fantastically lucid during that, that message. He's apparently a little bit medicated. I was going to say, is there any medicine involved here? There is, in fact, some cheeky medicine involved. Actually, probably not that cheeky medicine, but there is some no, medicine. No, there's, you know, actually, he's, he's on some actually good stuff. And before SmackDown tonight, he called again, and we had another chat, which ended up going a long time. And, and he, he asked me if he, if I wanted to hear the story of how this occurred, and I, I told him no. <laughs> because, <laughs> which, which, by the way, when Brent wants to tell you a story, that's usually a good idea. Yeah, so <laughs> I told him no because, you know, he said he wanted to come on the show. So I thought, okay, well, we'll call you during the Christmas show. You can tell us this little wacky story, and, and everything will be happy. Well, he ended up starting to tell me the story anyway, and I was on the phone for like 15 minutes. So we may have to do a deal tomorrow. But the deal is, everybody, we are probably going to call Brent in the mental ward during the show tomorrow as part of the Great. Christmas show or Monday or whenever it's going to air. So everybody can look forward to that. But Brent Brent needs our support right now. So uh, say your prayers for young Brent Kremen. I, I said it on the PPH show. I will say it again. 
And, and I'm also saying this having an aunt who also, I believe, is institutionalized. She may not be at this exact moment, but she was locked up for a long, long time. Loopy. These two people, I'm no doctor, but they're not crazy. They're just who they are. Would you agree, Vince? Um, I really don't think Brent deserves to be in a mental institution. I don't think Brent is a danger to anyone except himself. I don't even think he's a danger to himself. I guess it depends on what you consider a danger to yourself. <laughs> I don't think he's going to try and stab himself. He he may have perhaps habits which may not be the safest habits in the world, but well, you drive might, fast. Well, uh, kick his ass. Th- yes, that's all. That's also a danger right there. But so that's the story, everybody. On anyway, Brett Kremen, yeah. we'll have more in the next couple of days. But I thought uh, I would. Give... I don't know if to, if I should be amused or feel bad that I'm amused or. Well, it's. I think it's okay to be mildly amused because Brent, aside from actually when he actually thinks about being locked up, he's not at all amused. But when he when he talks about it, he there there are amusing aspects to it to him, like the fact that he was actually sent to a mental institution by his family involuntarily. This isn't the first time, is it? I don't know actually. I don't know these answers. Huh? No. But we'll discuss this with him tomorrow. But that'll be great. That's the story. One of our own is. In the clink. He's on the clink. It's he, the clink. He's in the hospital. Yeah. He's getting involuntarily. help. Involuntarily. He can't just leave. That's in the clink. Oh, you have a point there. All right. TNA Impact Nails. How much of the show did you actually end up watching? Well, I, I, I watched it all. You really? really? That's yes, a... I watched the whole thing. I don't think um, I would have. You know, I probably missed the first few minutes. I, I came on right when there was that, uh, the, the lamp leg. The leg lamp. The leg lamp, yes. The yes. leg lamp. Um, Eric Young. Was... No, I know what that is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian, have you seen the Christmas story? I... Probably when I was four. Okay. Uh, my my uh, my family just watched it today. So this made sense. I actually just watched it Saturday for the, all the way through for the first time in years. Hmm. Well, let's run down the show very quickly, and then we'll ask Nail all his thoughts. All I know, Nails, is in the middle of it, you sent me this email just saying something like, "TNA is wacky." Yeah. There was, you know, it seemed like the first twenty-five minutes were wacky skits. There, there yeah. were. Well, the next thirty-five minutes were more wacky skits. In the entire. 60-minute show, of which 20 minutes was commercials. Of the remaining 40 minutes, uh, six minutes consisted of actual in-ring wrestling action. That may be a record in this business of non-action on a wrestling TV show. But, but I, I was—I have to admit—I was amused by a lot of the skits. You, you were—you were—you were hooked in some strange way. I, I was. Once the start wackiness started, uh, Nash in the public stick, and this all entertained you. It just definitely entertained me. I, you know, it doesn't make me want to watch it again. But does it make you want to uh, pay to see a show? Yes, that's the key. I oh mean, no way, no way. And I think that's. I mean, that's one of the bigger problems. There's is, nothing. You know, I, I think there needs to be a little more seriousness for me to want. Well, I'm never going to pay for. I mean, show, yes, to, I, I to be fair, he never would buy a pay per view anyway. Yeah, but but you, you you. But in no way did this even begin to convince him to buy well, a TV. Let's, let's just say it was a big event on Sunday that I didn't have to pay for. Would I be nothing in that show made me want to watch anything on a Sunday? Even for there, you go. You, you would not have set aside time of your week to go. If Brian came over here and and like he used to want to watch pay, wrestling pay per views, I probably wouldn't watch it. Even then. There you go. You would so, go play. You go play foosball or something. Yeah, I don't know. Well, it opened up with serotonin coming out, and it was Sting versus Kazarian in the opener. And there's actually a funny story here. It was supposed to be Sting versus Matt Bentley. And whoever wrote up the lineup on the back, you write it down on a piece of paper and tack it up backstage, they wrote the wrong guy down. So Kazarian ended up doing the match, losing and getting caned by Raven. So I'm sure he was in a wonderful mood. All because after. someone wrote the wrong name down. Yep. So that is comedy. <laughs> Welcome to TNA, everybody. So he lost, Raven beat him up, and that, that was, was that. A minute and a half total, probably. Yeah. So they didn't even have a mistake of a good booking there? No, they just had the they wrote the wrong guy in the little slot. It would have been exactly the same with the other guy, just the wrong guy took the caning. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sting challenged Abyss, wanted him to. Uh, he had the belt actually. I'd completely forgotten this, and it happened last week on TV. He said he would give Abyss the belt back if Abyss came out and shook his hand and, and offered him a title shot and that sort of thing. So. so who's the actual? What do you mean give the belt? I don't understand that. Okay, Abyss is the World Heavyweight Champion. His real name is Chris. Chris Abyss is the World Heavyweight Champion. Yes. However, okay. the belt that, that he wears on his waist that represents the championship, Sting stole the belt. Okay, so... Uh, it would be like if Tito, uh, be like if, if, if Tito had stole Chuck's belt prior to okay, December 3rd. That, that works, yeah. So, or, yeah, I was going to 
That works. Well, that's just stupid. <laughs> I was trying to figure that out because I, I, I couldn't understand why he was offering to give it him back if he... It would be uh, like after the Super Bowl if Matt Hasselbeck could run up and grab the trophy and ran away. <laughs> Petey Williams has replaced Chris Saban in the Jackass crew. And they were together on the apron with Christmas gifts. Don West is back. He has a newfound respect for wrestlers after being put in the ankle lock. Yes, it turns out wrestling hurts. Yeah, I guess he never knew that before or something like that. They immediately cut to backstage where Borash was announcing AJ Styles and Samoa Joe versus Rhino and Angle for the main event. Apparently, Kurt Angle is actually a babyface. I had thought he was a heel. I have... Absolutely no idea who is who in that feud. Who who we're supposed to cheer for? How can how can Joe not be the heel or not be the babyface? Well, he is, but Kurt Angle is is now teaming with a babyface. He was a, kind of a heel again by the end of the show. It's very confusing. It is because because Rhino is a babyface. Rhino is yes. a babyface. Angle's on right. his team. Angle is the one going around attacking innocent people and putting them in the ankle lock. Yes. Joe is the one who's too much of a pussy to grant Angle a rematch. Yes. And uh, apparently it gets worse on the next show. Back in the day, Nails, when you were young, and, and even when we watched Nitro, it, it was pretty well defined who was a good guy and who was a bad guy. Yes, um, I, I will reference Macho Man and Hogan. Yes. There was a very clear line in between. There was never any confusion. No. Macho so Man was... Had, uh, I can't think of any confusion, except for in, when they did a turn. Yes. And well, maybe didn't announce it, they just all of a sudden were... Guys, but but. You, you you had the big baby face who was not a coward. You had this, yeah. the smaller heel who was a coward. He ran away. He beat his wife. Yeah. The, the man on steroids took vitamins as well to supplement his steroid uh, intake and that sort of thing. But, you know, it was typical baby face and heel. And Vince Russo doesn't understand that. He believes that there's no such thing as a good guy and a bad guy. There's Everyone's just, which in real life is true. But, I think there's a place for that, but I think it still it still needs to be uh, the clear line. I, I think, frankly, this feud would be perfect for it, except they're doing it all wrong. Yes. This needs to be a feud where both guys are baby faces. Yes. Where both guys are just tremendous ass kickers who kill everyone uh, except each other, and, and they want to kill each other, but they're, they're not they're, allowed to. They're an equal match. Yeah, they, or they should not be allowed to. Yeah. But uh, instead, they're both. Uh, 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 Joe's a pussy, and Angle is a uh, I don't know, just a dick. So then we had Eric Young being wacky. Team 3D walked up. This was where the boot, the leg lamp, the leg lamp was on the screen or whatever. Anyway, Team 3D said they had not forgotten about the Nationals beating them up last month. They were going to go out and they were going to destroy them. Their 15 minutes of fame was going to end, said Bubba Ray. 15 minutes, I might add, that has been going on for four, four and, and a half years. years. I would also like to say when Bubba said, we have not forgotten you beat us up, that's good because I had totally forgotten. I actually had not forgotten, <laughs> but I wish I would have forgotten. So they went out there, Dudleys versus Naturals. It was a squash match. The Naturals have been killed. Shane Douglas said this experiment is over. They left them in a heap of embarrassment and sadness, and that is the last we will ever see, likely of the dark-haired Natural. The blonde-haired Natural may still have a job, which really, of the two, lesser of the two evils. Okay, you say so. I, I will tell you that. he Because remember, for a while, the other one was, was out with an injury or something like that. What are their names? We don't know. Andy Douglas has black hair. Okay, Chase Stevens is blonde. Wow, that was pretty good after four and a half years. I, 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 and now you don't need to know ever again. What was that, Tony? How long have you been trying to remember that one? I've been trying for four years. I, I'd say four years and three months. About three months ago, there's something clicked in. Yes. So they are done for. This is the end. And I do not shed one tear. What would you think of that match, Nails? Any thoughts? I have none because I don't remember it. All right. Well, in a strange, the club. In a strange way, <laughs> I'm going to miss them. I'm not. In a very strange, inescapable nope. way. Not I hated for a them. moment. I not always for hated one them. moment. I think I'm going to miss the hate. There's plenty to hate. <laughs> this next segment was not something to hate. I know Nails remembers it. The black man coming out and rapping while the white man attempted to dance in the background and elves threw uh, presents or something that he <laughs> killed. were elves. This was awesome. This was great. This was the best segment in TNA history. I loved it. They just had a party. They did. It was it's, great. It's Christmas week. Let's have a let's have a shindig. There was no point to it. No, it was just a party. I thought that was you know I figured that would just be a crowd thing and they wouldn't even film that and show it to us. I suspect that was part of the idea. <laughs> and then at some point they're putting the show together and either decided this is so great it has to go on the air or or maybe they had to cut a match or, or, or it was too much wrestling yeah, or, or they're sitting there saying we have 36 minutes of material what else do we do either way thumbs up for this yes 
Then we had more with Nash and his goofy crew. They had a pogo stick challenge. That and was awesome. Sanjay Dutt, who is on the juice, according to Kevin Nash, has won the contest, but he is still not in first place. First place is Austin Starr. I don't know what's going on here except that they're all goofballs, but it entertains me, it, so I'm fine with that. strange thing. Again, <laughs> they, they, they know Loki's involved, and yet he should not be. So for this week, they did not put Loki in the pogo stick. Yes. He, he took a dive. Yes. And even Nash said, okay, zero points for you. <laughs> what, what is the point of all that, though? No one knows. I, I think the idea is they're, they're giving... Loki or the thing, whole thing in general. The whole thing, I mean, why do they do that stupid pogo stick bullshit? To be wacky comedy. I think the idea is they're trying to give characters to everybody. Like, that's more important than anything else. And they, they used to have an X Division, which is which is all the little guys doing a bunch of flips and crazy matches. And it was the one thing that TNA had that WWE did not have. And they have now taken that away from TNA. Now it is a completely 100% WWE light. And apparently they're happy with that. So I guess what can you do? The only main event act on the show was out next, LAX, Conan, who, if he does not win best interviews in the Observer this year, something's seriously wrong. Who has cut better promos this year as a whole than Conan? The only person I can think of close is Cena. That, he actually, he has been very good. But Conan is freaking fantastic. He came out ranting and raving about everything and, and uh, said the Mexicans should be filled with goodwill and cheer towards men and uh, this and that. Ended up with um, Santa came out told uh, Conan to shut up, and he ended up being Spike Dudley, who the Mexicans promptly killed. They gave him the border toss. The jackass geeks hit the ring to make the save. I was just happy seeing Conan and these guys kill everybody. That was great. There was a missed opportunity here. Conan was carrying what I believe was a small Christmas tree, about a three-and-a-half-foot tree. And sadly, <laughs> I was so waiting for him to start hitting people with the tree. It should have hit Spike with the tree. Exactly. It did not come to pass, so that, that bummed me out. But other than that, this was fine. Was it was wacky. What do you think of Conan Nails? Any memories of him yet? I don't have too many memories of the guy. I think he, I remember seeing him a little bit, but he uh he's a scary man. He's scary looking he, man. He is a big thick And if he just goes out there and threatens violence upon people, uh it, it it's just believable. <laughs> that that is for goddamn sure. I love how he comes out and he's got a bandana on his head, a bandana around his face, his entire body is obscured, and all you can see are his eyes and his two big dangling earrings, and it's like, that man could be robbing a bank. He could have just returned from, like, the, the uh, First National Bank, held it up. Brent Kremen right. says One that. One of his friends probably did today. <laughs> could, could have been. Brent Kremen always says when he sees Conan, he looks like a bank robber. Yeah. And Brent finds this stupid, and so he's outraged. Yeah. And I want you all to know that, though I hate Brent, in his honor, I announced that Conan looks like a bank robber. He does look like a, a bandito is what he looks like. <laughs> there you go. Chris Abyss came out for the talk with Sting. Sting preached to him, and he asked for the title shot in return for the belt. Chris was about to shake his hand when Christian appeared on the big screen. He may have been outside of the institution that Brent is currently in. <laughs> it was a large white building with a barbed wire fence around it. And he said that Abyss had been there at one point, and he had done something very, very bad. Mike Tanay determined that he had actually been in prison. So, ended up with Abyss goozling young Sting. And uh, Christian ran in, attacked everybody in the ring. Sting, Abyss, security with this nightstick. Segment actually ended up being kind of a death segment. It, it was all right early when Sting was preaching, but then it just it went on too long. The people weren't into it, and same thing we've always seen. Is he going to turn? Is he not going to turn? Is he going to turn? And Abyss finally gave Sting his bat and then left, and um, it was just weird. I mean, Sting walking up the ramp, wasn't he preaching? Shouldn't he be staying to preach? Why did he just walk away? I wasn't I, I, down with this whole segment. No, this was just weird. Funny thing is I've got these copious notes about this, and I'm trying so hard to read them and remember, and I'm, I'm unable to, because it's just such a blur. This, this is, uh, uh, isn't this where a bunch of people ran out? Yes. And, and well, you know, of course, I haven't been watching it, so I don't know who was who, but uh, it was, it ended up confusing when, I didn't know why Sting was out there or Abyss was out there. It, it's a, it was a clusterfuck. We watch the show every week, and... 
it's just this this was I, this was not as bad as that show about three weeks back that I thought was the worst show I've ever seen, but this one was way up there. Th- this segment was almost that bad. This was like five hours packed into a one hour show with six minutes of wrestling. Yeah. And the main event, by the way, which was Angle and Rhino versus Joe and AJ Styles. What about three minutes if you take out the commercial right in the middle of the match? Stop that, guys. They The match started, they went to commercial, and when they came back, Angle was already making his comeback. And it's like, you've got two matches for a total of six minutes, and you've got to put a commercial right in the middle of the main event. These people have no earthly idea what they're doing. And it's like, why, why would you ever buy a pay-per-view based on what you've seen on this show? I mean, you're conditioned every single week. All you see are two-minute matches. They, they always do a minute-and-a-half commercial, then a minute when you come back. Well, no, but the point I'm making is every week all you see is two-and-a-half-minute matches, and they're telling you, buy the pay-per-view, buy the pay-per-view. Why would you want to buy it to see more two-and-a-half-minute matches? I see. Why would you think that matches are going to be any different than they are on TV? But I want to see three hours of wackiness. Yeah, I mean, is that's, that what that's, you... I mean, that's, truly, that's what I got out of it. This is a wacky show, but I would never buy this for a wacky pay-per-view. Like, if you bought a three-hour show, you expect two hours of wackiness and maybe an hour of wrestling. Do they do they, do they uh, do that often? No, actually, they do the longer matches. The pay-per-views are, are all long matches, but you would, are, never, you would never know from watching the TV. So this show was an absolute mess. And, and, and I should also add, I think Kurt Angle is now just another TNA guy. Oh, yeah, he was just another TNA He's guy there. a couple of weeks back. And... Remember when Angle was talking about, I'm going to help this show beat Raw and get a 2-6 and all that? Yep. Maybe he meant cumulative. Like he's got a, all, every show he's on, we'll get a 2-2-6. Uh, not, it won't. <laughs> what do you mean every show he's on? Has he helped at all? He, he, he did one pay-per-view buy rate, I think. I, yeah, he's done one pay-per-view buy rate, and that's, I think, pretty much it. The, the rating has gone up. I don't know what the rating was for last night. We didn't get it yet. If it's a 1-2, then, then things are looking up slightly. If it's a 1, then really probably nothing has changed. But even then, it coincides with the move to primetime. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Nothing right. has changed. Yeah. So if they do a 1.2, they'll be all right, but um, not looking good. So, Nails, that's pretty much it. I- Home of breaking news here at F4WOnline.com. Brian and Vinny here. Hi, everyone. For those of you that have not heard, here on Saturday, December 30th, 2006, perhaps Sunday, where most of you are listening to this around the world, Saddam Hussein has been hanged. Holy shit. Seriously, now. They hung him. We're going to talk about some wrestling and MMA, though. I guess we'll talk TNA, of which I have no memory. I remember kind of sort of liking the show for about three quarters of the way through, and then it fell deep, deep off the cliff. It just amazes me that I can watch all these shows, and TNA, I just watched it yesterday, and I, or two days ago, no memory. Well, it's, yeah. It's just all a gigantic, a gigantic blur. blur. And it's a blur watching it. And nothing, nothing meant anything, because if it did, I would have remembered something. But, I mean, not looking at my, because I'm going to look at my notes in a minute, but just thinking about it, like thinking back and going, what was on TNA this week? I remember Nash doing the thing with the pole, the limbo, mm-hmm. and I, as God in heaven above is my witness, I can remember nothing else. To be fair, we usually do the show 24 hours, 24 hours after Impact. Now it is 48 hours later. Yes. So you've had an extra day to forget stuff. Impact is just the most absurd name for this show. <laughs> because it makes no impact. Nothing on the show makes any sort of impact. They should just call it TNA Fuzzy Image. T- just call it... Just don't even do TNA it whoosh. What'd you see on that one show? I don't remember. <laughs> so it should be. That one show. I am now going to attempt to recap this without reading the report word for word, which everyone just read the goddamn newsletter if you want the whole recap. All right, let's see. We had Angle in Cornette's office screaming about how he wanted a rematch. He was going to get it one way or the other. Oh, they were going to hand out Mr. TNA trophy at the end of the show. It's all starting to come back now. <laughs> I've got, let me see how many words I wrote about this goddamn fucking show here. Now that I'm reading a report that is 1,599 words long, it's starting to come back to me. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, let's see. Then we had, oh, they were announcing a match night involving a pole. That that always amuses us. You cannot when, have when a When a stereotype match. comes true, that's funny. It's always funny when people are like, yeah, how do you know Russo's book and Brian? 
Well, let's see, a pole. <laughs> Something is on a pole. Something involves a pole. You know Vince Russo's involved. <laughs> yes, sure enough, there was a pole tonight. Chris Saban faced James Storm. No, you're wrong. You thought that's what it was. Oh, that's right. Like, Wait, this is a tag match. I actually, let me see how many words I wrote about how I tried to explain this. <laughs> I wrote 79 words before I figured out what was actually going on. <laughs> I thought it was Chris Saban and James Storm because I thought, hey, you know, the guy just broke up with his partner. This is the beginning of his singles career. James Storm's coming out for his first singles match. No, they gave him a partner. <laughs> Chris Saban and James Storm versus Petey Williams and Chris Daniels. A match I have no memory of whatsoever. It went about uh, three minutes. And uh, all I know is that afterwards, Jerry Lynn ran down. Somebody, I believe, tried to cheat, and Jerry Lynn was not down with this. So Jerry Lynn ripped off his shirt and was in better shape than all four men in the ring, with perhaps the exception of Petey Williams. And he beat up Chris Saban and Chris Daniels. So apparently they're going to have a match. They're going to have a pointless three-way for some reason. I actually do remember this because I remember thinking, A, for a three-minute tag match, that was pretty good. And B, Petey Williams is a dang good babyface. For a guy who's been a heel the whole time, mainly because they wanted to do... Well, he's a good babyface worker. Like, when you ask him to cut up babyface promo okay, yeah. and, and shit like that... He got the hot tag here and made this really great comeback. And it occurred to me, he should have been a babyface this whole time. He's been a heel on Team Canada. Why? Because Scott Demore wanted to do Team Canada and needed some Canadians with him. Yes. That's good. Yes. So, yes, uh, thumbs up for Petey. Yep. So that was the whole deal right there. And, um, yeah, I guess um, I just – I watch Jerry Lynn and I'm like, I think, why should we care? Like, his character has been so well-defined that we're supposed to care about any of this. His char- <laughs> no, his character hasn't been defined for the past eight years, but he's, he's just a guy. And uh, let's see. Saban and Daniels have been feuding for the X title. Saban and Lynn have had their little – Pissy fit, and now Lynn does not like Daniels for Christ knows what reason. How's that for an explanation? Nope. Don't get it. <laughs> Samoa Joe arrived on crutches with a mystery woman. I'll get into that more later in a minute. Borash interviewed Jim Mitchell about Abyss, blah, 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 uh, threatened to reveal the dastardly secret. Uh, Joe did an interview saying uh, he wanted to talk about Kurt. It, um, oh, she asked him about Kurt, and he said uh, Kurt was not getting a rematch. He, um, God, I have to fucking read this word for word. <laughs> Kurt was not getting a rematch. He was moving on to the NWA World title. He wants title. the NWA title. Should we do the rant again about why TNA has the NWA title? No, I don't give a shit about that. That's the least of their concerns. <laughs> That's, when the next show does another 30,000 buys and it's like, hmm. They need to rename the belts. Why? Why is it 30,000? I don't get it. Why is this not going up? Well, why would anyone want to buy this shit? TNA, I mean, seriously, I know they don't get it because it's been four years now, oh, yeah. and Dixie Carter's clearly clueless. That's for sure. But seriously, if you're not, I mean, if you're a worker for the company, I mean, you're loyal to your company and all that, but step away from it a minute and just think, why would anyone buy your pay-per-views? Why? If, if I look back, what pay-per-view, if this were not my job, would I have bought in, like, the last five years? Maybe Joe and Angle. It's the only one I can think of. Right. Why, why would you want to buy any of these? What do they give you? Well, good wrestling, but this, as we know, that's not enough. From watching this TV, why would you ever be compelled to buy a pay-per-view? Oh, no one. No, no reason. <laughs> I get angry when I, re- when I re- recap this because it's just ridiculous. It it's makes, a waste of time. It's a waste of your time and mine. It is. This is a waste of time. It's a fucking company on a treadmill. There's, it's all the same shit for five years. And people keep trying to tell me this is a huge success. Oh, Brian, it's a huge success. As they lose money every month. As they lose money every single month, month after month after month. Let me ask this question. All right. When TNA first started five years ago, all right, disregard all this shit about who said how long it was going to last, everything like that. When they started five months ago, they were indeed handicapped. They had no TV. They had no stars. Right. What did they have five years ago? Nothing. Nothing. They had the hope that the three million people that quit watching WCW would come back. That's what they had. Now, what does WWE have that TNA does not have? 
They both have prime time television. They've both got big stars. They both seem to have enough money to uh, sign whoever they want that's on the free market. Kurt Angle, Sting, Christian, Tomko, fucking Tomko, whoever. What does WWE have now that TNA does not have? Better production values, but that's... What does TNA have, or what does WWE have that TNA does not have? Better production values is not the difference between 30,000 buys and uh, 300,000 buys. What does WWE have that TNA does not have? The only thing you could possibly come up with is the brand name that has been developed over the past 40 years. 40 years. I, Are you telling me that I'm going to have to watch TNA do the same shit for 40 years now? Is that what's going to be next? What's next? I mean, there's been every excuse in the book. We don't have good TV. We need bigger stars. This, that, and the other thing. You got it all. You know, I would argue they don't have big stars. So as soon as they come out on TNA, they look rinky dinky. But that's TNA's fault. Yeah. I agree. The point being, there's no, there's, they're not going to sign anyone and have it be a big turnaround. Somebody answer me this question. If you've got a great answer for this, tell me. I really want to know. Fucking 9 o'clock p.m. on Thursday nights, Kurt Angle, Christian, Sting, Samoa Joe. And you can't make a good WWE story. WWE doesn't have Rock and Steve Austin. No, they do not. Who's WWE got right now? John Cena. He's a big okay, star. John Cena, well, he would Yeah, be. but you know what? None of those big stars in WWE are really making a huge difference in, uh, in the numbers. True. What does TNA, what do they need now? What's next? What are we waiting for? I want to know what we're waiting for. I keep saying the same bullshit. What are we waiting for now? I don't know. Nothing. <laughs> It'll just be the same show. We'll keep wasting an hour of our lives watching it and then another hour talking about it. Over and over until we die. God. I just want something. <laughs> something to look forward to. I mean, seriously, i got to watch this show every week. I just, I just want to look forward to it. I don't want to. Even one segment. I hate the show to end. If there's one thing I hate in my life, I, I talk about living to be 150 or, or whatever, but someday I'm going to die. And so really every hour means something to me. It really does. And when I have to waste an hour watching a show that has been designed in such a way that it makes no impact on my life whatsoever, and two days later I can't even remember what happened that hour without 1,700 words worth of notes, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Mm Mm-hmm. And it, 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 I don't know what the deal is. It, it, it's just a bunch of clueless people. That's that, like assuming, that's wrong. Assuming this is all great. Boy, what a success we are. Any any day now we're going to be at a four. Any day now we're going to be at a five. That's delusional. So there you go. Should we keep talking about it? Let's just move on. I'm going to uh, briefly talk about the rest of the show. Dudley's came out, and uh, oh. You know what? <laughs> Speaking of stupidity. I'm very close to just not even reviewing this show anymore. Long story short, we had a segment where Spike Dudley turned on the Dudleys and then reunited with them all in the course of the same segment. Mm-hmm. Not even over the course of a couple months. Not even over the course of a whole show. Oh. Over the course of a three-minute segment, Spike yes. Dudley turned on the Dudleys and then reunited with them. In the same segment, by the way, where, where Bubba Ray and Dudley declared they were the number one contenders. Why? Because all the other tag teams broke up. Yes. Way to go. <laughs> That's a solid challenger. This was retarded. LAX got involved. Apparently, that's the thing they're building up to, and Spike took a super bomb. or Bubba gave a, Spike a super bomb on a homicide. Bullshit. Uh, the Nash stuff was at least funny. I laughed. Uh, Christian was ranting about something. Don't remember what it was. I don't want to read the whole thing here, so everybody read the newsletter. It was a pointless promo. Yep. The VKM was outside the building getting people to uh, chant. best one was BG goes, hey, what did you think of that oiled-up guy in the last skit? And they're like, oh, it sucked. And he goes, good, that's what I wanted to hear. And I thought, whose skit are you talking about? I just fucking saw you do a skit with a fat, oiled-up guy. There's a fat, oiled-up guy, uh, yes, in the, in the Nash stuff. And, in fact, he is fatter and oilier. I just read all of these, and I don't remember. Till I, like, I read right here, Robert Roode versus Lance Hoyt. No memory. I totally forgot this until right now. No memory. I actually have to read the whole thing right here to try and remember what happened. And um, what do we have? Uh, Eric was backstage. Tracy had given him a BJ in the bathroom or something like that. And uh, I do remember what happened now. I don't. I don't even. I never even wrote down who won. <laughs> I don't know. 
<laughs> I remember what happened because... Oh, I remember what happened. Yes. This is what happened. i got to explain this. Tracy takes... They're in the middle of the match. Tracy takes uh, Eric Young into the bathroom, and uh, she shuts the door. Literally about 20 seconds later, she's at ringside throwing uh, Lance Hoyt off the top rope so Bobby Roode can win. Like, and, and then they go back to Eric Young, and he's like, his shirt's ripped off, he's got lipstick all over him, and all of this apparently happened within 20 seconds. I swear to God, 20 <laughs> seconds between her going in the bathroom and coming out, this had all happened. Yes. God, this show sucks. I, what, I remember, what I remember about this, because I forgot about the Eric Young stuff entirely, Lance Hoyt's buddy, Ron Killings, was out there rapping and then came up to do commentary. And he spent the entire commentary period basically talking about how he was going to take over Hollywood, whatever that means. So the match ended. Killing's buddy not only lost but got screwed, and Killing's again was talking about Hollywood. Then he left. Then he left. That was it. That's it. That was an eight-person segment for no point. Oh, and then there's here's where the show really. I mean, as much as I hated the rest of the show, this was the, the just the pinnacle here for the last couple of minutes. Yep. Abyss versus Sting versus Christian, non-title. Nice stick on a pole match. Of course, a pole. A, a pole because it's Russo. Nightstick, no reason. Yeah. No, there is a reason. I'll explain it to you. Because you see, TNA wants oh, everybody right. to be a star. So we've got Christian here who's never lost in TNA, even though he's lost about a dozen times. Uh, we've got Sting who's undefeated but has lost. He's even lost the title, in fact. Uh, then so we have, of so course, Christian. the Abyss. who's the, Yeah, they both lost the title, but they're still undefeated in the company. Because uh, whenever they need to win, they just do a match where they actually tell you, this doesn't count. Yeah. Whoever hits another guy with a nice stick, he's the winner. But the other guys didn't lose. Don't worry. Christian's still undefeated. So, of course, Sting hits Christian with the nice stick. And the best part is the nice stick's on a pole. And the pole is such that everybody on their feet could probably reach up and grab it. Or at least jump for it. But they still have to not climb the first rope, not the second rope. they got to pretend like they have to climb all the way to the top rope to get this nice stick. The best of which is um, who ran down? Oh, Tomko, who's the tallest of all. Yes. He had to pretend like he had to climb up to the top rope to get. He climbed so high that he had to reach down to get the nice stick. Yep. That was classic. The other great point was the announcers were saying about how this was this match was put together to help Cornette decide a number one contender. Yeah. If you want to decide a number one contender, don't put the fucking champion in the match. Yeah. That's counterproductive. So you've got this match to determine the number one contender or whatever, and the champion's in there. So of course the question is, what happens if the champion wins? He fight himself for the belt. So what do they decide after this? They have all three men are now going to fight for the belt of the pay-per-view. Woo! Why? <laughs> Why would you pay to see this match after you just saw it here for free and it sucked? And it sucked the week before. And you gave them a match with a stipulation, and now they have to pay to see a match with no stipulation. <laughs> Indeed. Stupid. Perhaps they think their, their belt is over. You know, I have never in my whole life ever seen a worse booker than Vince Russo. We know. I'm not talking about in a major company. I'm talking the lowest level indie group. Caden Matthews, as much as we made fun of his show, better booker than Vince Russo. Tim Flowers? At least Caden sent everyone home happy. Oh, God, Tim Flowers? Way better. Tim Flowers is on a level so much above Vince Russo that I can't even begin to get into that. Uh, Tim Flowers was uh, Sam Mushnick compared to fucking Vince <laughs> Russo. Vince Russo is just, and I'll tell you why, we're getting to the big segment here. So Here we go. They come out to to show the Mr. Uh, TNA or whatever fucking thing it is, and Joe wins, comes out to get the trophy, and then Angle runs out on the stage with a girl. We are told at the end of the show, hey, it's Joe's girlfriend. Angle puts her in the ankle lock. Joe says, fine, you can have your shot. Angle says, um, I'm going to break the ankle anyway, breaks it, whatever. And we're supposed to care. We're supposed to be motivated to buy their pay-per-view now. Tip, everybody, when you're story writing, it usually helps to define the character for a period of time before you put the character in a situation where we're supposed to care. <laughs> you ever seen a movie where, like, you watch the movie for two hours, and then uh, in the last two minutes a character appears on screen and is killed and we're all supposed to cry? Why not that I can think of? No. Never. <laughs> never. Never, 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 never. In fact... In fact, usually in a movie where a character dies and it's just supposed to be a, a small part of the story, you're just introduced to the character. Like the character comes into the movie and all of a sudden they're dead because it's not a big major deal. This was supposed to be a big major deal. This is the fucking big giant angle to get Joe versus Angle 3 going in uh, January. That hadn't and, occurred to me. And it's a character that got pulled out on the stage and introduced. I mean, 
early in the show, I don't even think they said it was his girlfriend. No, no, it was he, just Joe, a rat. Joe walked in with a female. Yeah. And she may have been a nurse. Worst booker in the history of this world. To say nothing of the fact that, you know, we, we said before, this is the one feud that does not need an angle, and instead they booked it like a, every generic pro wrestling angle ever. And worse, you're supposed to care about the uh, the guy who was an Olympic gold, Olympic gold medalist. Now he's just a guy who snaps women's ankles for no reason. Yeah. And Joe, who's too much of a pussy to get the guy rematch. Oh, God. This show, in hindsight... This show sucked. It sucked all the way through and then sucked a big dick at the end. It's like the last several weeks of, like the last two months of Teenage should just be put together on some sort of super DVD, some super comp set of CV- DVDs and just show them every booker and be like, it'd be the first day of class. Never book like this. And then you'd start the real stuff. Okay, then now this is how you do it. It's so bad. It's so bad. They'll never, they will never get to a higher level. No. With this bullshit. I, I, I can't, well, I, I guess I can believe, but it, it should be sinking. Their, their virus should be dropping, and they're not. No, well, no, they, they're, they're just like WWE. They're just like, I mean, look They've at WWE at the end. They've got their They've got the people who watch paint dry. They, these people would, in fact, watch paint dry. If you, if, if, as long as the paint spelled out the word wrestling, they would watch it. Yep, exactly. That's what uh, TNA is right now. Just a wretched program. Just wretched.